You are watching Sweat Football on ESPN3. And you can see the traffic jam outside of the stadium. That is because it is homecoming for the Southern Jaguars as they get set to play host to Alabama A&M right here in Baton Rouge, a place where the Jaguars are almost unbeatable. Hello, everyone. I'm Butch Alcindor, along with college football analyst Jorge Vargas. And not that they needed any extra motivation, but it is homecoming tonight for Southern. But if you want to know how tough is Southern at home when they're playing in the friendly confines of Mumford Stadium, they've won 14 of their last 15 games. That's a home field advantage. That's as friendly as it gets anywhere at any level. We win 14 out of 15. That is absolutely amazing. And this team thrives on the amazing energy they get from their fans. And with homecoming here, it is extra, extra special. No doubt about it. I got stuck forever. I thought I was part of a parade coming in to the stadium today. Okay, let's take a look now at our impact players for tonight. And when you talk about Alabama A&M, they have an explosive passing attack, and that starts with number four, their quarterback, Akeel Glass. Uh, Akeel Glass is amazing. This guy gets it done, leads the Southwest SWAC in, in yardage. This guy gets it done, 2,298 yards, 21 touchdowns. He has two receivers that average almost 19 yards a catch, so they love the big play, and they go at him. Let him get it done. Okay, his last name is Glass, so the Southern University Jaguars <laughs> will be trying to break the glass, and that chore will come down to number one, Calvin Lunkins tonight. Oh yeah, Calvin, he's a cerebral player, no question about it. Uh, he gets that defense going, gets everyone in place, and he's going to be the leader, trying to confuse that glass, maybe help shadow that glass. 44 tackles on the year for him. He'll be trying to get it done for that defense. We are just minutes away from Shelton. We are Southern. Welcome back to Mumford Stadium, where Southern is celebrating homecoming tonight, taking on Alabama A&M. The Jags have actually won seven of the last ten ball games they played together. So, Jorge, what do the Bulldogs have to do tonight to kind of turn that around? Uh, Bulldogs, really the biggest thing for them is defense, right? I think their offense is, is leads the, this whack. They, they get things done. They have a lot of offense compiled. Unfortunately, they give up almost as much as they get, and that is an issue. Uh, they give up 30, 34 points a game. They get 34 points a game. But that's not going to get it. And the rushing is probably their biggest issue. They give up 1,500 yards a game. They're going to have to stop the run. That's going to be their biggest focus today at the beginning of this game. Well, the Jaguars have won the toss, so they will receive the opening kickoff from Spencer Corey, number 19, and we are underway in Baton Rouge. And Southern has it on a 10, and the return goes a big hole wide up the middle, and a nice return for the Jaguars as they're going to start in excellent field position there with the football. So that's how you want to open a game with a big kickoff return. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. I think uh, the, the key there is, is is no flags. I mean, every time you see a return at any level, it seems like there's always a flag. There's always a penalty. So that's uh, out of the gate. You don't want to see yellow yellow laundry fly. So we're going to get our first look at the quarterback for the Southern Jaguars, number eight, Ladarius Skelton. He's 6'2", 210 pounds. He's a sophomore from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. And he's been a little bit up and down so far this year. This time, off the zone read, Skelton keeps and picks up big yardage. He has five yards right up the middle. Good read by Skelton. Yeah, you mentioned he's hot and cold sometimes, and I was really going to say that, is that when he gets hot, he's as hot as anyone, but then he'll have these moments where he just kind of seems like he gets off course. If they can keep him uh, at a rhythm today, that would be special for him. And we have flags on the field here. It's going to be illegal procedure against the offense. Full start. Offense, number 78, five yards, second down. That was our referee, Y.N. Myers, the third, and as he makes the call, that'll back the Jaguars up five, so that's basically going to erase that nice return, nice yardage that Skelton picked up on first down. So now second down 
really about nine yards to go. Back to the zone read. Skelton again, a huge hole. Now it's a foot race around the outside. He has one man to beat, and Skelton is shoved out of bounds after he picked up the first down, and a lot more. Desmond Fletcher coming over to do what maybe was to save a touchdown on that play. Yeah, but Skelton did a great job. He rides that running back till the very last moment. Then he pulls that ball out, and, and, and they think it's a quick decision, and once he decides to go, he's off. Skelton looking to throw this time. He has a man, a completed pass to Hunter Register, and he's going to be tackled by Trenton McGee after a short gain on the play. Yeah, good decision there. Just take your time, mix it up. If you run too much, then they're going to start your defense to start being able to key. Keep them off balance. I like the play call there. Pick up three, four yards. Excuse me. Skelton actually started the last six games of last year and went five and one. So he was very impressive. Comes on the option left and nothing but running room. Skelton's going to walk in for a Southern touchdown on homecoming. The Jaguars break out in front. Again, that same play. And they certainly like something they saw on that left side of the offensive line. They dominated nice big holes. And again, you ride that running back in there. They're diving in, they're taking that dive back, and you've got a clear path to the end zone. You mentioned it on the top of the show, and we'd have to see what the AM Bulldogs defense, they would have to come to play today, or, or else this thing could be 50 points on both sides. And again, specifically rushing. They don't they don't handle the rushing very well. And again, I think that's where Southern came in and said we're gonna exploit it. So the Jaguars on to attempt the extra point is Martel Fontenot. He's a sophomore from Zachary, Louisiana. And he puts it up and through, and just like that, the Jaguars break out in front 7-0, and they did it mostly on the ground behind Ladarius Skelton running the football. Yeah, and they got that one nice pass in there to break it up just a little bit uh, to keep him off balance, and then they go right back to it. See how he drives that running back? He stays in there, and then once he pulls it, he's a runner. He doesn't mess around. Sometimes quarterbacks try to get a little too fancy. Once he decided he's going to keep it and run, there was no... He was gone. That's well, it. and the beauty of it is on the zone read, it's all on the quarterback. He yes. has to make the read, and he made the perfect read at least three times on that drive. Right. And again, and, and they're basically telling the Bulldogs, look, if you're going to take this dive, you're going to get a whole dose of skeleton off that tackle, and I'm going to come at you. you got to stop me. Cesar Baraja now will handle the kicking chores for the Southern University Jaguars, and that has got to be a huge lift for them to take an early lead when you're playing on homecoming. Yeah, and you mentioned real quick you know, how tough they are, Southern here, right, to play at home and how tough they are to beat. Now the Bulldogs, for them, the, the key is answer and answer quick. Uh, for them, they want a nice sustained drive to go over there and, and just shut up the crowd. That is number 23, Gary Qualls on the return, and he takes it over the 30-yard line. A nice return there. So the Bulldogs from Alabama a and will also start with excellent field position as they take over on offense for the first time, which will give us our first look at their quarterback, the young man who's leading the SWAC in passing, number four, Akeel Glass. Last year, of course, he led the SWAC in passing with more than 2,400 yards, and at that time he was just a sophomore. So this guy has continued to improve, but the thing Coach said the most was he likes the way he's becoming more of a leader on offense. So they operate first and 10. Glass turns. Fakes it to Bentley. Fires has a man wide open on the slant pass. That is Abdul Fatai Ibrahim. And so they come right back with a big play on offense to the Bulldogs. I see it's an exactly, this is a, you, you ride the running back, but then you throw it, right? So instead of him taking the run, he's riding it to make them suck in the, the defense, the safety step up a little bit, find the hole in the gap there. Glass, this time hands to Jordan Bentley. Running room for Bentley before he spun down near the 35-yard line. So he starts it with a gain of four. Number one, Calvin Lunkins, the young man we talked about at the top of the show, is in to make the stop. Yeah, and Southern's going to really have to work on that Bentley, <laughs> I say, because the Bulldogs are going to pull out that Bentley and try to drive it for quite a while. <laughs> Glass with an empty backfield, fires it out near the sidelines, and slips one tackler, but not much going on the play. It's number 12. Terrell Gardner before the ball was popped out of his hands, but that was near the sideline, so that's going to set up a third down coming up for the Bulldogs. Third and about six. You know, they've been working with a faster tempo to start this game. You know, Southern goes down and scores, but it didn't phase these guys because they come right back. I think pace is a big part of, of what college football is all about now. you got to keep guys on the heel. You don't let your defense get, get comfortable. Glass with a clean pocket. Now he does it under pressure. Scrambles up and fires. 
It was almost caught, then it was almost intercepted. Montavious Gaines on the coverage for Southern, but he did have some time there at the end and uh, just couldn't connect. Yeah, and watch Jordan Bentley at the end of this play. It's not meant for him, but he tries to come in late and try to maybe pick up that ball and get a reception out of that. Bentley last week, big game for him. Fourth down coming up now, and the Bulldogs are going to keep the offense on the field. Fourth and six as Glass calls out the signals. Maybe trying to get him to jump there, Jorge. He sends two men in motion. That's what it looks like. And now he sends to the third man, and they do snap it. He fakes it to Bentley, throws it back to Bentley in this flats, and he's going to be very close to the first down. A nice move by Blint Bentley, but once again, Lunkins is there to make the stop, and it depends on the spot. Yeah, I think they gave him a really good spot. It looks like he's going to get the first down here. Yeah, they'll move the chain. Yeah. They'll get the first down right on the line. You know, for the Bulldogs, Connell Maynard, he's an offensive wizard, and you saw a little bit of it there. He put everybody in motion. This time we have whistles on the play, and they couldn't get it off, but... He motioned everyone to the left side and then threw it to the final man who went in motion. Well, I think what was interesting there, right, as Southern, just like us, thought, okay, they're just going to try to draw us off. and almost rest for a minute, right? When you see the, the third guy go in motion, like, they're not snapping the So that gives them the edge. Once they do snap it, you're about a half second late, and that can be the big difference. And again, Bentley, uh, great drive. He, he, forced, he, he forced his way uh, to get that first down right there. And I was mentioning a minute ago, he had a big week last week, three touchdowns uh, on the ground, one reception. 197 yards. Yeah, big thing. You can see the officials. Looks like they're reviewing the spot. Taking a look because it's an important spot. It was a fourth down play. And as you can see, he got very close to the sticks. I, I thought the spot was a good one for them. We're going to see where that knee goes down. And again, unless you have, it's going to be what angles they can actually see. From that angle, you can't make a determination. But what an effort by Bentley. I mean, he's like you said, he's the last man to go in motion. They throw it to him near the sidelines. He's five yards short of the first down when he makes the catch, oh, and yeah. he makes a couple of moves. And uh, the spot said he had a first down. We'll see what the officials come up with now. Right, again, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't think they're going to have the angles to be able to determine. Because, again, you know, when you're overturning a call like that, it's got to be uh, without question. Now, see right here is the better angle here. I think he's just short of that 30-yard marker, and they put him just over the top. So it'll be interesting if they have enough to be able to overturn that. I would have marked him probably just short of that 30-yard line. But how about Connell Maynard coming out here and going for it on fourth down on their first possession? Southern went down and scored, and he said, hey, look, we're going to have to have some points on the board tonight. So let's take a look at the series history here between Southern and Alabama A&M. It's the 20th meeting all time. Southern leads the series 11-8. to And as we said earlier, they've won seven of the last ten in this series, and the last six have come in a row. Of course, the first meeting back in 1939. Let's get the call now from the officials. After the review, the runner was short of the yard in the game. It'll be Southern's ball, first and ten. So Southern will get the ball. They were short of that 30-yard line. I didn't think they'd have enough to, to make that call, but I, but I do think that is the right call. It looked like it was about a half yard short of the 30-yard line. So now Southern will get that offense back out. And I'll tell you, if you want to quiet some Bulldogs and rough up some dogs, now's the time to make another big yeah, drive. And, and you know what? What a big call. Early in the ball game, they go for it, and they, and they saw on the replay that they must have con come up with the fact that they were inches short. So that's going to hand the ball back over to Skelton, and the Jaguars, who had no problems getting the ball downfield the last time on their first possession of the game. This time, Skelton. Again on the zone read, an option pitch. And what a great play by Washington to turn nothing into something. Jamar Washington, what a great athletic move to get his hand up there and bring that ball back Watch in. Watch his concentration, Butch, right there. The pitch was ill-advised and a little odd, to say the least. But he kept on that ball, would not let it go. Skelton, the fire pass near the sidelines, and he has register, and that will be a first down for the Jaguars. So that little short hook pass, and two Willie Wilson was there for the stop for the Bulldogs. And one thing to note, that first drive, right, everything was to the left. Everything was to the left. Now they're going to the short side of the field, and they're going to the right side of the field. Look for something right here to the side, to the left side. Jennis Berry, the offensive coordinator, mixing up the calls for the Jaguars. They are operating with another first down on their second possession. This time, Skelton on a keeper has some room around the right side, and 
Skelton tap danced his way down the sideline for another first down and four before Desmond Fletcher could get him out of the field of play. What was interesting, Skelton was running standing straight up, no lead at all, and I thought almost he was going to pop up and pass it, but there's no one uh, going out for a pass. My father was running that, and it's just the offensive line. we got to give them some credit here. I mean, they're staying on blocks. They're not letting guys get away from them. Fantastic job by that O-line. And that looks like Devon Ben who's uh, coming limping off to the sidelines. So, of course, he's the starting running back. That would be a big loss for the Jaguars if he could not return to the ball game. Pass by Skelton is blocked on a great defensive play by the Bulldogs. Marcus Kushini there to make the play. Hey, you get some penetration right here. And actually, <laughs> that is excellent effort. You've got a guy on you. As he's blocking you, you go ahead and jump up and get the feet knocked out of you. But a great job knocking that ball down. So a big defensive play by the Bulldogs. Forces a second down and 10 to go for Southern. Gelton with a fake. Looking deep. Has a man out there. And it might have been just a tad too long. He was throwing that pass deep down the sideline, and he just could not connect with Hunter Register. But, boy, he was—he had a couple of steps there. Yeah, he, he did, and I thought it was a great pass. I thought it was uh, uh, high enough where the, where the receiver had a chance to make some adjustments right there and uh, just couldn't come down with it. It wasn't an easy catch, but I, I would imagine Register would tell you, I need to make that catch. <laughs> to Willie Wilson back there defending for the Bulldogs. But that was close to a touchdown as you can get. Third and ten. Now for the Jaguars. Skelton with an empty backfield. Operating with five wide receivers. Two to his right. In the pocket. Dances around. Comes up the middle. He has some running room. Breaks the tackle. And Skelton is going to pick up another first down for the Jaguars. The offensive line for the Jaguars are doing an incredible job. Both linebackers out of the middle stunned inside. And, and I mean, it was a great pocket. I mean, Skelton just wanted to run. <laughs> he didn't see anybody open, so he said, I'm going to go ahead and take off with this. But I'm telling you, great job by that O-line with two linebackers stunting, and they didn't go anywhere. That's another first down with the ball resting around the 23. Skelton fires into trouble, and that pass is almost intercepted. Number 29, Trenton McGee had his hands on it, and, you know, that's the first mistake Skelton has made today, and he got away with it. And Terrell Wilson uh, got hit by his teammate pretty hard here. He's shaking up. They're going to let him uh, just sit there and collect himself a little bit. The training staff uh, head over there. Watch this impact here. And, again, look how he's squeezing it in here. Steps up. That's the long oh, that's run the down play, the yeah. sidelines where he picked up that nice first down. It's uh, to Willie Wilson who was down on a knee and some good news because he is up now and walking toward that Alabama A&M sideline. Yeah, that, that's good news there. But did you see that little juke move at the very end of that? He had that little hiccup, almost like a basketball media time about a basketball crossover he was trying to do there. Okay, let's pause for a timeout now with the Southern Jaguars leading Alabama A&M 7-0, and it's homecoming here in Baton Rouge. This is tech that helps you be there. The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech-advanced engine in its class. Welcome back to Mumford Stadium. Where the Jaguars now are looking at a third and two. With the ball resting near the 15-yard line as they're trying to pick up a big first down on this drive. The Southern leading Alabama A&M 7-0. And the handoff goes inside and that's going to be a first down for Southern. Gerard Sims on the carry. I thought there may be a little bit of a, of a face mask there at the end of that play, but uh, didn't see a flag pop up, and it looks like it isn't going to be good enough for a first. Looks like they've got him on a fourth down here in one, which they marked him a little bit short. So this is a big play call for Southern and what they're going to do here. The ball, the football, was moved back to where his knee hit, so he got inside of that 15-yard line. So now fourth and inches for the Jaguars, and they hand it off inside again. To the big fella, and he spins away, and that time he made sure. Gerard Sims, the six foot, 200 pound freshman, he's their short yardage expert, and he got it done that time. 
You call it an expert. I got a big dude that says I'm gonna go and keep running. That's, that's, what that is. that's what will to run right there. Nice job. And again, I can't say enough about the offensive line. They they are just doing a great job getting getting movement on the on the line of scrimmage. First down and goal to go for the Jaguars. Skelton shakes one tackler and then he fights his way down to the five yard line before Adrian Portlock with some help from his friends is able to pull him down but again Skelton doing it with his legs early in this ball game yeah he's a, he's a he's a load to deal with he's 6'2 210 which is obviously a really good size as far as but he's he's muscular and he's he he attacks right he makes those defenders have to bring their what do you call it bring their lunch pail and go to work if they're going to try to tackle him he's not an easy easy tackle for a, a quarterback for sure Second down and goal to go. Skelton with a keeper, and he has nowhere to go as he's taken down a fine defensive play by Trenton McGee, the six foot, 205 pound junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see them there. They're gonna key and they're gonna basically say, "Look, all right, Skelton, you're not gonna beat us anymore. Someone else is gonna have to step up." So you're gonna see the keys change for for the Bulldogs, and and right there, the last couple of plays. You've seen they're looking more to Skelton and they're they're giving more room to that running back. This is a big down coming up right here. Third down, goal to go. Skelton has a lot of open space in front of him. Now he pulls it down and he pulled it down too late because he can't make it in. Adrian Portlock, one of the guys there, and so was Juan Travis Kelly helping out on the tackle. But it was he had it open for a second. It was that little delay that may have cost him a touchdown. I remember I said early in the game the thing he did really well was make the decision and go. And then right there, he was still looking to pass, still looking to pass. And it was about a half second too late. We really should have decided to run it. And that's a big fourth down right here. So we saw Alabama A&M go for it on fourth down just a few minutes ago. And now the Jaguars are going to take their shot. Fourth and goal from the one, and they hand it straight ahead. And he may be rejected inside. Quan Travis Kelly. One of the first to arrive for the Bulldogs. That was Devon Ben back in the ball game, and he did not get in for the touchdown. How big was that for the Bulldogs? What a huge stance here! And again, I've been giving a lot of credit uh, to the offensive line of the Jaguars, and and I'll tell you that time, Bulldogs said roof, roof. <laughs> How about that? Here. Juan <laughs> Travis Kelly though met him in the backfield before he had a chance to get any momentum going forward and he just destroyed the play by that so that turns it over to Alabama a and and they start from deep in their own territory with the ball resting near the two yard line glass with a little roll to his right completes the pass and the receiver is going to be knocked out of bounds that's Jonathan excuse me that's Abdul Fatai Ibrahim who makes the catch near the sidelines but they needed that because you want to get away from the shadow of your own and goal it shows how much confidence they have in glass right there was no question a little short rollout and Ibram was just waiting for that ball right when he made that cut the ball was laying right there for him so second and short this time the handoff goes to Jordan Bentley he shakes one tackler in the backfield but he can't get much there at all Bentley came into this game as the second leading rusher in the SWAC he's had a fine year so far in fact he's become the all-time leading rusher for Alabama AM. and great job by the Jaguars there the, the hole they were trying to get to was really on the right side off off guard and he had to make adjustments and they just squashed that play right from the beginning third down and three to go for the Bulldogs you see Akil Glass looking toward the sidelines as they're trying to dial up the right play this time uh, Bentley who's 6'1", 195 pounds. He's a senior, and he just does it all. So here we go. The big play, and he fires. He has a man wide open. That's going to be a first down to Zabrian Moore, the 6'3", 185-pound junior from Tuscaloosa before Jacoby Papillon could make the stop. Yeah, and again, that's the same play they did right out of their own end zone, and they just have the great confidence in Glass, and Glass does a nice little job of rolling out and throws it on the roll really well and very accurate. Those receivers turn around, and if they're not ready to catch it, they're going to get a ball in the face. That is a huge first down because they started in a big hole, and now they've worked their way out of that hole. This time, Glass looking to throw it. He's looking deep, scrambles around in the pocket. Now he's out of time, and he's going to be smacked down hard by the Kavion champion, that big six foot, 290 pound senior from the Caney High School in Spring, Texas. Yeah, no question. He was looking deep, no doubt about it. Like I said uh, earlier, he's got two receivers that average about 20, 20 yards a catch, but he was trying to get one of those. 
This time he hands to Bentley, who keeps driving forward, and he's going to have a nice gain on the play as Bentley before Callum Carter could come in to make the stop. But Jordan Bentley, once he gets going, he's tough to bring down. Yeah, and Caleb Carter uh, knows something about tackling. He was uh, second on the team, 48 tackles in, uh, uh, for this game, and uh, he, he's handling his business. This time, Glass fires it out near the sideline. That is Gardner who makes the catch, and he's bumped out hard by Carter. But once again, the Bulldogs doing a good job of just advancing the ball on first down, bringing themselves up to a second and manageable situation. Yeah, you can't have negative plays, and they've done a great job staying away from that. Glass looking to throw it again. Dumps it underneath. He was trying to hit Gardner, but that one is going to be incomplete. And you could tell they were trying to get some big bodies out there to get him some blockers out in front. Yeah, Southern's doing a nice job coming off the corners now. Uh, several times they've run that rollout, right? So I noticed the defensive ends are taking a little bit wider, wider run and trying to let Glass come to them instead of taking that inside run. The last two times they've taken the outside and they've actually gotten some uh, confused some of that play. Alabama in him now looking at another key third down. Third and about seven for a first down. I say a long six, close to seven yards for the first down with the ball resting at about the 32 yard line. Glass with the fake inside, fires near the sidelines, and he had a receiver who slipped down on the play. That is Zabrian Moore, who actually had a 76 yards reception last week. Slipped down, so no first down on the play. Great anticipation by the defensive back there. Look at that. I mean, the ball was not exactly accurate, but he did a great job of attacking the ball. Tay Marie Smith making a fine defensive play there for Southern. So that's going to set up the first punting situation of the afternoon for the Bulldogs. That will bring on Spencer Corey to kick it away. But that was a good series for the Bulldogs, right? They get the big fourth down stop. They were really pinned deep at the one-yard line, and they at least moved the ball out to the 30-something. Now they're going to punt. They didn't leave their uh, defense in, in trouble. Corey is averaging about 38 yards a kick, and this one will be returned. A couple of nice moves by Hinton before he is knocked down after a nice return of about 12 yards. But a good return there by the Jaguars. And as we pause for a timeout now, let's stop for a minute because the Jaguars are up in this one. Seven nothing over the Bulldogs. It's homecoming and the Jaguars fans are having a great time. We'll be right back. First and 10 for the Southern Jaguars with the ball resting at about the 36-yard line. They lead this ball game 7-0 over Alabama A&M. The Darius Skelton at quarterback on the zone read. He hands to Washington, and he's going to be caught and dropped in the backfield. Once again, Quan Travis Kelly, the first guy to get there with the white jersey on, and uh, he's, he's off to a really good start in this one. Yeah, that handoff to Jamar Washington. Uh, I think I think A&M is kind of sending their defenders a little bit to the wide side now because they've been burned by Skelton off that tackle and wide. So they're kind of, I think, the, the goal or the inside run right off the guard's tail, that's going to be a little bit more effective right now for the Jaguars. Second down and about 11 after that loss of one. Skelton under pressure, caught in the backfield and dropped well, on the play. Bulldogs 92. Did a Breon Austin was the guy leading the charge, making the big sack in the back. Well, what Austin and that rest of that defense did for the Bulldogs is they read screen the whole time. They got right in the hip pocket. They're like, oh, I see it coming. And they went ahead and put a stop to it right there. Uh, Jaguars were trying to set them up. And Bulldogs, that's great coaching because they knew they saw their reads. They knew what was coming. So great coaching by the uh, uh, Bulldogs staff. Yeah, there. you know, we can ha we have a third and about a trip to New Orleans coming up right now <laughs> for the Southern Jaguars. I mean, it's, that's like 25. Uh, so it's going to be a long ways for Skelton and company as they have moved backwards on this possession. Of course, last week, Southern lost to Alcorn State 21, 27 to 13. That was a rematch of the 2008 SWAC championship game. So they came into this one hungry. Plus, it was homecoming. So, Skelton looking to throw it. Now he steps up in the pocket, has some run, going to pull it down. Still on his feet as he gets it out to about the 35-yard line. Marcus Kushini came on to make the stop for the Bulldogs. And I tell you what, that 
Alabama and in Bulldogs defense is playing a lot better than maybe a lot of people would have thought coming into the Well, those first game. couple of drives, they learned something. They made adjustments. And, again, I, I give credit to the coaching staff when you make adjustments in game like that, especially during a quarter, first quarter of a game. You don't wait till halftime. Uh, that says a lot about what they're doing, what they're seeing, and, and not just seeing it themselves but uh, disseminating that information to your team and then them executing. And that's exactly what's happened here. Odu Hilaire back to return the kick. And it's a way he's going to have to chase this one down. And uh, he decides he better just leave it alone because it actually takes a Bulldogs bounce coming upfield with that one. So they're going to start this drive with excellent field position. You know, I mentioned last week that Southern lost to Alcorn a and Alabama a and on the other hand, won an incredible game against Alabama State, 43-41. That was in triple overtime. Well, so they got the <laughs> offense rolling last week. These overtimes get so fun and crazy. I mean, they're scary, but, man, they, they, they just get exciting when you're, you know, everything's sudden death, basically. So it gets, it gets exciting. And when you last through a three-overtime game, that really gives you a lot of momentum. Yeah, Glass actually tossed a two-point conversion to Bentley for the win, and they come right back on the attack offensively with a big play right there to number 80, Cameron Young, who makes a catch for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you notice a lot of their first down plays. They're just trying to get that three to four yard, five yard passing route to get some room, get some confidence, get ahead of the chains, and it opens up their playbook. Glass on second down, fakes the handoff, throws near the sideline, and what a terrific defensive play right there by number 16, Casey in Chicago, and he came up quickly. I think he read that one. He wasn't sleeping during the uh, film no, no. session. No, Casey was all over that. No, no doubt about it. I mean, he had he drug his receiver that he was covering to the play to stop it. That's 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 getting it done right there. So that fine defensive play will set up a third and long now as Glass operates out of an empty backfield. Wanted to throw it quick. Now he looks deep. Now he's out of time. Spins away from a tackler. Fires downfield, and what a big shot, and we have a penalty on the play. That could be a hit on a defensive receiver as a nice catch by Terrell Gardner was made, but, boy, the boom was lowered by, I think, is Tay Maurice Smith, number 26, and then the flag came out immediately afterwards. Dawson Odom's on the sidelines as he's checking it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, I think the tough part about a hit like that for me is his head, at least from at first glance, the defender's head was up. He was flying to the ball. Yeah, he was flying to the ball. And the result of the helmet flying off, I think, is why the flag went off. And I, I don't know if a defender running full speed can stop himself in the middle of nowhere there. And I don't know if that's a defenseless uh, receiver to me, at least from my, my viewpoint. Of it. Time out. And you can see YN Myers calls for a timeout on the field. So we will take a timeout in the booth with Southern leading Alabama a and 7 nothing. We are in the first quarter of a lot of action in a big ball game. Personal foul, targeting, number 26. Welcome back to Mumford Stadium, everyone. You're watching our head referee, Y.N. Myers, and he's calling targeting on the Southern Jaguars for this big hit right there on Terrell Gardner by Tay Maurice Smith. Well, I'm not a referee, but I disagree with the call. I, I just, as a defender, you're, and there, there's our targeting rule why probably I'm wrong. <laughs> you can see a dangerous hit that involves launching an upward thrust or a severe strike, and uh, he did launch himself into the receiver there. It was a lot of uh, body put into that one. It's a 15-yard penalty, and the Jaguars are going to be guilty of that. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a bad move for the Jaguars because Tay Marie Smith will probably be ejected from the ball game. Well, what, what I find interesting to me is that football's a game of aggression. You teach guys to be aggressive and to attack the football. He did attack the football. If, the, if, if he was slower hitting him and the helmet didn't fly off, I don't think you'd see uh, the targeting. And, here, and here's another look. You see Glass getting away from the pressure, fires it out there. The pass is a little behind the receiver and the big hit. Right, but again, he even hit his shoulder. He didn't hit him head to head. That, that's why I'm, I'm just, you know, again, I, I, I understand we're, we're, we're trying to, to, to keep safe with, with players, and I, I agree with that, but 
he hit the shoulder of him with his face mask. He was standing up. There wasn't uh, now did he thrust? Did he drive forward? Yes. So if, if again, if that's the rule, then, then then so be it. No one asked me to make the rule there. <laughs> but I just I just think from foot, from a football nature, you can't coach that any better as far as a, as a as a defensive back attacking the football. He didn't attack the head, he kept his head up. But to me, that's a form tackle. It's just an aggressive tackle, and it's hard. And, and a lot of well, and the good news on the play was no one was hurt. That's Correct. that's the big news, first of all. And the officials are back over talking this one again. They want to get it right. They want to have the right call down on the field because it's really important for the rest of this game. Here we are with 13 ticks to go in the first quarter, so we have a long way to go. But you're right. It's important in the fact you got a player that's going to get out of the game because of this. If, if they stand with the call they just did a second ago, I'm, I'm wondering – from my standpoint, what brought him back to the to take a look and talk, right? Because he made the call right when we came back from break, and then now he went back over there after. So let's see. This. After review, there was no targeting on the play. It'll be Alabama's a and ball, first and 10 at the 40-yard line. Please reset the game clock to 17 seconds. One, seven seconds. Well, it looks like he reversed the call. It's hard for me to hear that. And so there was no targeting. Well, either way, it was an incredible catch on the play by Terrell Gardner. Uh, he made a huge play on that one just to hang on to the football. So that's going to be first and 10 to go for the Bulldogs from Alabama A&M as Akeel Glass but gets like his team up to the lunch. I like the reversal. Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt, but I like the reversal. I think they got it right. They took their time. Made the right call. So it's a first down for Alabama A&M. And the handoff in the backfield goes to Quarles, and he makes a nice run as he picks up about six yards. A big gain on first down as number 23, Chase. Emoji with the hard eyes. We are getting set to start the second quarter here in Baton Rouge, and after consulting with Jorge Vargas, the officials <laughs> have decided that there was no targeting on the play, So, which is a good move for Tay Maurice Smith gets to stay in the ballgame. So we pick up the Bulldogs on the attack, and the give is to Quarles, and he fights his way forward, and he's finally knocked down very close to a first down by DeKavion Champion again. Number 91 has been active. It is a first down as number 91 made the tackle champion, but not before Qualls could get to the first down for the Bulldogs. So first and 10, Glass throws it out to his Zabrian Moore, and he had nowhere to go. A fine tackle by Daytrail Brunfield. Brunfield made the stop in the backfield, so it's a loss of two on the play after that fine defensive play by the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, and Daytrail, great great tackle there. I mean, he went through through his receiver again. Uh, grab the legs of that receiver who's going nowhere. So great job. Uh, the tackling for Southern has been fantastic. You know, a lot of times in college football, it's it's the, it's the tackling in open field, and all these offenses are designed to get guys in open field. So it's all been it all it's all it's all predicated off defenders being able to tackle well. This time the handoff goes to Qualls, tries to get around the left side, but nothing doing there. Daytrail Brunfield again up quickly to make the stop. And Quarles is kind of a the, the little scat back, right? I mean, he's got a speed and he's shifty. And you can see he kind of hides behind his lineman there real quick and then kind of pops out. But uh, Southern's doing a great job of containment. And, and you see a lot of guys, a lot of times when guys start stunning a lot and going through the offensive line, you create huge gaps. And today, Southern's playing really just sideline to sideline, keeping everything in front of them. Akeel Glass, number four, still at quarterback, looking at a third and nine to go. To continue this drive as he looks to the sidelines to change the play. Zabrian Moore has been one of his top receivers, and now we're going to have a timeout on the field. So there's something that Connell Maynard and company over there on the sidelines did not like about that offensive set. Yeah, you could tell they were confused. We're going to pause for a timeout. Stick with us. We'll be right back. 
The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech-advanced engine in its class. And you see Glass completing the pass underneath, and it's going to be shorter the first down. So we'll see what the Bulldogs decide to do this time on fourth down. And they're still discussing it on the sidelines. No sign of the punter yet. Yeah, they're going to bring And here we go. Didn't want to think too long about that one. So the Bulldogs will punt the football away. That will bring on Spencer Corey. And when you look at an offense this good, you've know, you got Akeel Glass, you got Jordan Bentley. I mean, who would you think would have the second longest run of the year for this team? Certainly one of those guys, right. our wide receiver, oh, right? Sure. No. It's this guy, number 19, the punter, <laughs> Spencer Corey. He had a fake punt. He ran 72 yards for a touchdown. It's the second longest run of the year for the Bulldogs. It's a, it should be a trick question. It's a nice trivia question because nobody would ever guess that the punter would come up with the <laughs> second <laughs> longest run of the year. And that time he came up with a great punt as the ball is down at the two-yard line. So Corey did a great job, Spencer Corey, of setting up his defense and putting the Jaguars in a big hole. Yeah, and that was the right that was the right move there. And, and what's funny is uh, watching the Bulldogs come out on defense there. Uh, their confidence has been growing as this uh, the first after the first two drives. Uh, you can tell their confidence after that big fourth down stop. They're, they've got a little bit of a swagger as they walked onto the field. Uh, a couple of their D linemen were showing the the safety <laughs> sign, so they're ready to they're ready to turn the tables uh, right now. Looking at a couple of the stats from the first half, Ladarius Skelton. 11 carries for 118 yards. I mean, that's a whole game's worth of running the football in one quarter. So he's done a great job on the ground. This time he lets a running back do it as Devon Ben powers his way forward for about three yards. Yeah, I thought it was, uh, when I was looking at the stat sheet, I thought it was wrong there. I had to kind of take another look at it. I'm like, wow, you're right. That's a whole game, and you did it in a quarter. Yeah, and he made it look easy, and, you know, he really did. He had a fine job. If you look after that, the next leading rusher was uh, Sims, two for seven yards. This time, Skelton going to keep it again, breaks the tackle, still on his feet, and finally falls down at about the 12-yard line. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, that's, that's certainly getting it done. And, again, what they've done, it seems like each drive they've picked on a side, whether it's right or left. I'm really interested to see if they start moving that ball from side to side now. And you can see Dawson Odoms, Odoms there on the sidelines in that huddle with his team trying to get things straightened out. Uh, right there, wants to get it straightened out when they get back on the field defensively in yeah. that huddle trying to get people in the right positions. Well, they played well, and I think tackling, they've, they've been done a really good job there uh, making sure that the big play is avoided. Skelton again hands it off to Ben, and he cannot turn the corner. Number 45, Denzel Davis, the 5'10", 190-pound junior, made a big stop there. Boy, he came out of nowhere. Yeah, and that's a clinic on tackling, right? I mean, it's exactly what we ought to talk a little bit about earlier. You know, you had a, a linebacker that just scraped to the outside, tattooed the guy right in the face, and wouldn't let go, right? That's how you shut it down. So that's going to set up a second and long for the Southern Jaguars, Skelton. Has been doing a great job running the football. So, so passing the ball. Two of five for only nine yards through the airways. But as I said, they've moved it well on the ground. Skelton this time fakes the handoff. Has the blitz. Steps away from the blitz. And then he can't get away as help arrives in time. And a big sack for the Bulldogs. Marcus Cushiony. One of the guys back there to kind of corral Skelton as he tried to get out of that. Yeah, pocket. and that was a team team sack right there. You had a lot of guys, a lot of movement going on. Uh, to Willie Wilson supplied that pressure from that outside, and then big old 57 here, uh, Marcus Cushing, uh, kind of cleaned up there, cleaned up the mess. <laughs> yeah, what a play by two Willie Nelson. He Skelton kind of stepped away from him, but all it did was just set everybody else for the sack. So Southern now with a third and about 20 for a first down. Skelton out of his own end zone runs it right up the middle and he's still on his feet breaking tacklers and he dives forward for a first down so we mention the success he had running the football in the first quarter it continues here in the second quarter and he's tired he got a little he got hit pretty hard there at the very end looks like he got like a little something in the stomach there probably lost some wind so he's coming out. But look at the great run there. And I mentioned earlier they were getting all their yards on the outside off the tackle. And this time I said the middle is going to soften up, and it sure did there. And we have whistles on the field before Glendon McDaniel 
could get the snap away. Of course, he's coming in to replace Skelton. False start. Offense. Number 64. Five yards. First down. And the Jaguars are guilty of illegal procedure on offense, so they will back them up five. And as a new quarterback coming in, sometimes that will happen like that. Yeah, especially when your your, your, your quarterback's had a lot of success early in this game and he gets out on a play like that. The, the whole offense a little off kilter there. He comes running on, and again, he has a different cadence. Uh, so that, that's not that's not unusual. McDaniel, 6'2", 190-pound sophomore from Dothan, Alabama, completes his first pass, and a nice pass it was near the sideline as number 45, Denzel Davis, made a big tackle on Washington as he just – Spun him around and threw him out of bounds on the play. Yeah, Denzel Davis kind of like does those hog ties. <laughs> he may have grew up. Might have farm. some rodeo in his background. <laughs> there. He does because he. I, I called him a linebacker earlier, and he just tackles like a linebacker. That's why just his form looks like that. But he doesn't. If he grabs onto somebody, he's not letting go. Now McDaniel has gotten some playing time this year. There have been some games when Coach Odoms has put him in to try to create a spark. And uh, here you see McDaniel breaking up the middle, showing off his speed, picking up another first down for the Southern Jaguars. Yeah, he gives him a different look, no doubt about it. And he's a lighter runner, right? You can tell he doesn't necessarily have that kind of, he's just quicker, right? He glides. Uh, he's one of those guys that doesn't look like he's running that fast, but he's running by everybody. <laughs> we have an injured player on the field. It's number 20, Armani Holloway, who actually has a twin brother who also plays defense for the Bulldogs. He's a cornerback, Amari Holloway, so it's good to see him get up on his own power and just hop over to the sideline there. As Southern continues to move the football, and at this point it doesn't matter who's that quarterback because McDaniel moving the football as well as Skelton did. Another first down for Southern. McDaniel faced the zone read. Comes around, has a lot of time, and then finally throws it right to the defender, and it's an intercepted pass by Adrian Portlock. And just as he had the team on the move, that was a big mistake by McDaniel. Yeah, that, that was, I mean, it was a perfect pass to the defender. I mean, he had the running back in the flat, and he couldn't decide if he wanted to throw to the running back in the flat, and then he thought he'd try to squeeze one in there. And he just got burned. He was it was an inaccurate throw. I don't he obviously wasn't trying to throw it. But I mean we're talking right between the numbers. Right between the three and L. Yeah, he was trying to get that ball over there to Hinton, who was standing near the sidelines, but uh he did not get it over uh Portlock's head, and it's going to be the first turnover of the game, an intercepted pass. So here come the Bulldogs and they go to Jordan Bentley, and that Bentley does not drive too far on that play. Calvin Lunkins, and you know what's interesting about Lunkins, we talk about him a lot. He has two brothers who are also named Calvin after their dad. So he's named Calvin. He has two brothers named Calvin, and his dad is named Calvin. So it's kind of like that George Foreman, Foreman thing going on right there in the <laughs> Lunkins' home. They're going to have the Calvin grill coming out. The soon. handoff to Bentley and a nice shake and bake move, and Bentley dives forward. Depends on where they mark it, but he looks like he's a little, like actually it's going to be a first down for Bentley as the sticks move, and a fine play as Benjamin Harris was finally in there to make the stop, number 18. Yeah, great hold by the Alabama A&M uh, uh, line there. And, and Bentley was, uh, I'd say he's a smooth runner right there, but he was waiting. He was allowing blocks to happen uh, before he cuts up the hole there. Glass turns and he hands to Bentley and straight ahead he goes. And right now that offensive line is doing a great job of making contact and pushing the pile forward. And Bentley is just getting in right behind his big friends. And uh, he's just driving it forward. Bentley, you know, we, we talked about him at the top. He also leads the SWAC in scoring. He scored 14 touchdowns this year. And the give is to Bentley again, and he fights his way. He's going to be close to the 10-yard line. Excuse me, the 5-yard line on that play. I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, you know, one thing about teams, they, they stay close for a while, and they start getting some confidence. It started on the big fourth down stop. The defense picked it up, and then you get a turnover. And that offense says, okay, we're going to make, we're going to get some gold at the end of this thing. You can tell they have a little bit of a swagger on this, on this drive. Yeah, and Bentley is leading the way. This time he fakes it to Bentley, throws it out, and it's almost intercepted by the Jaguars. Tay Marie Smith, and he would have had a long way to go to the house with that one if he would have come up with the interception. He sure did. He read it. 
And it was interesting. I think he wasn't sure if he was deciding to intercept it or hit the receiver. And he was kind of in between. If he would have just totally committed to interception, I think he would have had that ball and could take off. But it's one of those things, Coach, that says, if you go for the ball, you better get it, right? I think at the last minute, he's like, well, let me make sure I make this back. Yeah, that was a dangerous <laughs> pass. It was completed to Cameron Young on the play. But uh, Bentley was moving the ball so good. That, that's almost a strange call in that situation. Uh, that will set up second down now for the Bulldogs. And timeout is called. You saw it signal for there by Kendrick Johnson, number 89. So the, the Bulldogs just weren't in sync on offense. Timeout. So we're going to pause for another break now timeout. with a timeout on the field. 7 0 Southern okay. here in Baton Rouge. Timeout. Welcome back to Mumford Stadium here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where the Southern Jaguars lead Alabama A&M 7-0. Here in the second quarter, we have 5.30 to go. Our first quarter, which went on for quite a bit, but the second quarter has kind of flown by here as we have 5.30 to go. And you see Alabama A&M knocking on the door. The give is to Bentley. And Bentley is driven back into the backfield. So some fine defense there by Lunkins and company. Number 47, Caleb Carter also helping out Calvin Lunkins on the tackle. Lunkins is getting tuned up. I can see that since the first quarter, he's getting more aggressive. He's starting to thump his chest a little bit, and he's getting his teammates involved. And again, this is a huge. This huge is a series huge right down, a huge series, and a huge down coming up here for the Bulldogs. Akil Glass fires into the end zone, has a man, and that is a touchdown for the Bulldogs. Abdul Fatai Ibrahim makes a nice catch right there, a big pass and a great timing on the play for the Bulldogs. Glass, nice back shoulder throw. Yeah, exactly. Glass reminded me of those earlier uh, series. Remember when he would just he would roll out real quick and he was making a decision before the receiver even knew it was coming? And right there, he just backed up through it. And you're right, back shoulder. And as a defender, it's very hard to defend something like that when the ball's already out of the, out of the hands, when that receiver turns back, the ball's there. You can, it's almost impossible to defend. Spencer Corey on to attempt the extra point. He puts it up and through the uprights. And just like that, we have a tie ball game. 7-7 as the Bulldogs go on a drive. Time out. We'll be right back with more second quarter action. Not much. How about you? Are you answering my text in person? I am, yeah. The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech-advanced engine in its class. And that is Bulldogs head coach Connell Maynard, and he's, a, he's an interesting fellow. We're going to talk more about him later. He's in his second season. Last year he went 6-5, and five, and believe it or not, that was their first winning season in six years. So he has the Bulldogs back and on the right track, and they're just coming off a touchdown drive that tied this ball game at seven apiece. Well, you know, they could have easily, right, been very intimidated. First drive, go down 7 nothing. You've got a homecoming hostile crowd here that, heck, you probably own buses had a hard time getting in here, right? Yeah, it and, took, they went on a six-and-a-half-hour drive to get here for this game. Whew. So here come the Jaguars on the kickoff return and a big hit after the runner got right around the 13, right around the 30-yard line, but a big hit by that defense. Caleb Riley, I believe, was the guy that laid the hammer down there. Great job. Yeah, Caleb Riley. He's a 5'10", 175-pound sophomore from Georgia. And that's how you want to play on special teams, and that will get the coach's attention every time. Bet. So as we look at the Jaguars on offense, Ladarius Skelton back in at quarterback after the interception by McDaniel. He pitches on the option. That is Jamar Washington, and he picks up a first down for the Jaguars. Great job by Skelton right there. Remember the very first time they pitched? It was kind of a, a circus catch, and his uh, running back saved him. But right there was a great job going, attacking the line of scrimmage. He made the defense commit. He actually took it past the line of scrimmage. Once they committed, boom, nice pitch. Great pickup on the play. Jaguars hurry to the line of scrimmage after the first down. We talked about it earlier. Skelton has done a tremendous job running the football today. This time he looked to throw, but then he pulls it down in a wide open middle of the field. 
I mean, he started up the middle, and it was like the seas just parting. And a lot of room for Skelton. He may have 200 yards before we get to halftime. I am telling you, it's because look, look at that hole, and look at the linemen staying on their blocks, right? I can tell you, you know, it's just amazing how that offensive line's working. Skelton this time on the option play, pitches again to Washington, who's escorted out of bounds. But what Skelton is doing is putting a lot of pressure on the defensive backs. That was Trenton McGee getting him out of bounds there. But if you're covering your guy, he's running deep. You've got your back turned to the quarterback. You have to make a decision. Do you stay with that receiver or do you come back because this guy's taking off? And right there, right? Now Now you've got a, a, a quarterback running wild. He made three defenders commit to him before he made the pitch, and that's why you got a nice big game there. Second down. And about four yards coming up for Southern. Skelton in the pocket again, looking over the mill, middle, and he overshot Hunter, Hunter Register, who was open in the end zone. And, and I won't, I'll be surprised if I don't see a little bit more of that, right? I mean, the Bulldogs have to come up. They have to support that run. They have to start shutting that down. That's going to leave you a couple of big surprises up top. And I, I want to see them do that and give their receivers an opportunity to make the ball. Right there, he just needed to give him a little more room for that receiver to get under that ball. So Skelton tried to go deep. I think that was T.J. Bedford on that one. He ran right into the sun with the yellow numbers. That's a tough call. I think it was Bedford. This time Skelton fires near the sideline, has a man, and he's going to be spin down, spun down. That is Hunter Register there. And once again, the short pass was enough to move the sticks and pick up another first down for the Jaguars. Yeah, he's got to pull that trigger quick, though. I can tell you that uh, he takes or he, his running, he doesn't hesitate at all when he throws. He's got an extra little hitch, and it gives that defender time to move on that ball. And right there was a great clean pass, but the defenders, they're waiting to jump on the ball there. Of course, Southern predicted first in the West in the SWAC preseason poll That's after they won it last year. And this time, Skelton under pressure, and he cannot escape. He goes down quickly. Number nine, Marquise Price was the first Bulldog player to get there, and then he got some help from Adrian Portlock as they got him in a sack in the backfield. He, he was coming all, all the way there. That's a great job in defense here. See him come off the edge. He basically, I was talking about how great that offensive line is done, but uh, right there, he took it to Jadari and Davis right around him. Marquise Price. Coming up with a big play for Alabama A&M. So that's going to set up a second and long. Price again with some pressure. Forcing Skelton to step up in the pocket. And he finds his man. That is T.J. Bedford underneath. And Bedford does a good job of catching the football and coming up with a nice gain. And that's what you want to do after a sack is to pick up that lost yardage and more. And that's what they did right there. It's going to set up now a third and about a yard for a first down. Uh, the execution for the Jaguars has been really special, I think, today. Uh, I think the play calling has been nice. They've been mixing it up a, a great amount right now. They're, they're really giving them a dose of some pass to mix up with that great run they've had. Skelton barking out the signals, handles, hands off, straight ahead to Devon Ben, and he just hops in almost untouched on the play. I mean, wow. the middle was just wide open for Ben. And he made the Bulldogs pay. Looks like recruits out there sitting there, and they're getting into it uh, on the sidelines. Nothing like, nothing like having recruits come to see your team play, and you get big plays right in front of them. That's good to see. Boy, but, that's a big play right there. He starts right up the middle of the quick hitter by Ben, and he steps through there, and he wasn't touched. Because they, they're giving so much attention to Skelton now that they just left him alone, and you can't leave him alone. But I, I wish you could back that up a little bit more because before that play, he looked like a conductor. I mean, he was really getting very, very hands motion before that snap was out there. I, I was trying to wonder what the heck he was doing. I thought he was going to get a call for drawing the defense off. We saw one of the injured Bulldogs being helped off the field on the play. And right now we see Martel Fontenot coming on to add the extra point for Ben. That was his fifth touchdown run on the season. So he was pretty good last week and again uh, stepping up big this time. So the extra point attempt goes up and good. So he split the uprights. But again, let's give that offensive line a lot of credit. Jonathan Bishop and company, he's probably their best offensive lineman. And boy, did they open a big hole right there. Yeah, watch right there. And again, 
But he continues to fake. Skelton continued that fake, right? So you had defender still reacting. That's why he, he goes right through. And you're right. I can't tell you how much the Jaguars, I'm just impressed by linemen staying glued to their defender. And it's not about, you know, a lot of times in football, everyone talks about the pancake block, taking someone out, you know, this, this amazing block, right? The best block is being glued to the guy you're on so he can't go make a tackle. Yeah, stick to him. As we look around the SWAC, you can see this afternoon, 35-14, Mississippi Valley over of course, that's last week's game. we got some action going on this afternoon, but this is last week. 35-14, Texas Southern, a loser. And that was the triple overtime game we talked about. Yeah. Alabama A&M over Alabama State, 43-41. Alcorn, a big winner over Southern, and Southern trying to rebound in this one. And yeah. as you can see, Grambling and Arkansas Pine Bluff, that was a tough ball game. Grambling going on to win by six in that one. And, and a big real. mishandling of the play, and the ball is still loose. And there's a scramble for it, and the Jaguars may have come up with it. I think the Bulldogs have it. Let's see. But, boy, that was a dangerous, dangerous play. And Qualls, the young man who probably fumbled the ball from the start, had to scramble and get it back, and he did. As you can see, it was Qualls. Yeah. Boy, that, those are ones you you, you, you you die to get back, right? <laughs> when you make a muff like that, you're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, we just mentioned the sun. How that part of the field, if you look up, you are looking into the sun, and for just a minute, he could not handle that football, and that would have been a huge turnover for the Jaguars. This time, Akil Glass hands to Qual straight ahead. Not much room going on there. He picks up a couple. But, boy, what a job he did getting that football back. For Alabama a and that would have been a horrible time to turn the football away right after that Southern and, and they've done a nice job. No turnovers by the Bulldogs. Uh, and, again, Southern, the, the turnover they had, it cost them. Right? So, I mean, I think that's exactly you can't give the ball over and you sure can't do it this deep. Bulldogs operating on second and about eight. Akeel Glass with time has a man wide open and a nice catch made right there by Odu Hilaire. Nice job. He found the open seam and made the catch. That was a great catch. He did not give up on the ball. It bounced in his hands a couple of times, stretched out. He took the ball in. And it almost looked like he was bothered by the sun as Glass scrambles out to the right, looking to pass, fires back on the inside. He has Qualls, and that is a first down for the Bulldogs. Well, I have to say it's an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day here for football. But right now, that sun is coming down at that right angle that does affect players as they start looking for the ball, et cetera. So you're right. Can't see exactly how the, the sun is hitting them, but, but but it can sure affect a player looking up at, looking up, up at the ball. Timeout. Alabama a and the third and final timeout of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Please reset the game clock to 22 seconds. 22 seconds. Well, coming up at halftime, we have an interview with the Southern University president, Dr. Ray Belton, and what an enjoyable guy he was to talk to, and he talked about all the great things going on here at Southern University and, you know, how they're trying to increase enrollment, some of the activities going on with, uh, of course, with homecoming this week. Uh, Jaguars are on the move. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of great things happening here, and again, uh, just the campus. Uh, I, I loved a lot of the excitement, you know, other than taking almost an hour to get from, <laughs> from really right around the corner to the stadium. It was an absolute uh, carnival type atmosphere here. I thought Mardi Gras was, I was looking at my, I was like, man, am I in the wrong month or what's going on? Yeah, no, you were just right in the middle of the second parade of the day. So yeah, exactly. I hope you did a lot of smiling and waving yeah, to I the crowd. I there. pretended like I was some type of an authority coming through. <laughs> Bulldogs trying to get some points on the board before halftime. Akeel Glass under pressure. The ball is loose, and it's recovered by the Bulldogs in the backfield, and that was fortunate because it's rare that you get that type of recovery. But Jordan Lewis, number 32, coming in. You know, he came into this game not at full strength. He was a little beat up, and, boy, he came up with a huge play right there as the clock continues to tick down. Yeah, big big 79, Robert Samuel fell on that ball. And, yeah, they'll let this go to they'll go to halftime after that play. That'll do it. That'll be the end of the first half, and it ends on a sack by Jordan Lewis, knocking the ball free. Alabama a and made the recovery, but at the half, the Southern Jaguars are having a happy, 
happy homecoming so far. They lead the Bulldogs 14 to 7 as they head into the locker room. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with more of our halftime report. In its class. We are at halftime here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we have a special guest for you. The president of Southern University, Dr. Ray Belton, is here to talk about the festivities today. And we have a lot of festivities to talk about wow. because it's homecoming on it, campus, and that's it, been great. It's homecoming at Southern University and NM College, and it's nothing like it at Southern. It's the Southern way. And we truly, we truly highlight the uh, black uh, experience uh, here on our campus. Now, I know you had a parade early this morning, like 8 o'clock this morning, but you had some other activities. Tell me about those. Well, I, again, the whole week has been uh, re reflected the spirit uh, of Southern University. I mean, we've had parades yeah. uh, at 8 o'clock this morning, mind you, and, and, you know, that was purposeful. You know, we at the university, we try to blur the boundaries between the university and the community. We had a great turnout parades, concerts, symposiums all week. We had the opportunity to uh, actually invite our alumni back to the university. So it's been a very special week. Homecoming is always a lot of fun, but there's another thing that they're working on here at Southern University, and that is increasing the enrollment. Yeah, so uh, Southern University embraced the strategic plan uh, this year, and already uh, it is unfolding. Uh, and so this year we were, uh, oh, actually over the last three years, uh, we've been able to enjoy over a 10% increase in our enrollment. Uh, and this year, in fact, we enrolled more than 7,000 students in the process system, more than 13,000 students. And so that's rather significant for us. And you're celebrating homecoming today, but also you're going to be celebrating 140 years in existence coming up soon. Yeah, next year, again, will be a very special occasion for Southern. Uh, and we hope to invite uh, alumni uh, from across the nation. In fact, uh, we enjoy alumni uh, uh, globally. And so today is just sim uh, symptomatic of that where everybody is coming back uh, to uh, they're, they're, it's a homecoming, yeah. right? <laughs> and so uh, next week, uh, next year will be similar to that, where we can celebrate together the existence uh, of Southern University and how we are contributing uh, to uh, uh, the economy of this state uh, and really uh, advancing research and, and really fulfilling our public agenda as an institution. Okay, Dr. Belton, thank you very All much right. for stopping by. Yeah. Go back and enjoy the second half. All right. Very and of good. course, we will be right back with more halftime activities in just a minute. And welcome back, everyone. Welcome to Mumford Stadium, where the human jukebox is just getting ready to perform at the half. The Southern University Jaguars on homecoming, leading Alabama A&M, the Bulldogs, 14 to 7. You know, let's take a look at some of the highlights now, Jorge, and see exactly how they got there. And that guy, Ladarius Skelton, had a lot to do with the success Southern had in the first half. Uh, he was very authoritative on the ground, no question about it. 176 yards total, but with some loss of sack, 147 net. Not Very too bad. decisive. His offensive line took care of him. And on the other side, the Bulldogs came right back to drive their Bitley. That is Jordan Bitley, who had a lot of success rushing the football, and that was Glass right there with the touchdown to Ibrahim. That tied the game at seven apiece. And then Southern came right back. Their ground attack was outstanding. Yeah, and they mixed it up really well. I thought I thought the play calling and the, and the way they were running it. And again, I think most of the credit to me goes to that offensive line and coaching calls. And They've then how about Devon Ben? Yeah. The seas parted and he walked in for the touchdown. A nice touchdown run there by Ben. A great play. He's 13 yards on the play. And what a job. We'll be back with more. 14-7 Southern leading Alabama in Welcome back. We are at the half at Mumford Stadium with the Southern University Jaguars leading Alabama A&M 14-7. 
and what was really an exciting first half and with a lot of different things going on in that first half. And one of the key things I want to talk about, first of all, coming into this ball game, Alabama A&M's offense was averaging 34 points a game, but their defense was giving up 34.1. We're seeing a different defense tonight. I think what's interesting to me, both, both defenses have stepped up, right? You got two offenses that are pretty powerful, right? But A&M has had some big stops. They've allowed their offense. They created that offense turnover, right, for uh, their offense to go in. And what their offense did a great job is scoring seven, right? They didn't settle for three. They went down there and got seven. So this game has been tight, but their defense has done better. But there's no question the Jags offense has been moving, but they stopped them when they had to. Yeah, and Southern, of course, it's been the rushing attack. It's been outstanding, led by Ladarius Skelton. But on the other side, you would expect – Alabama a and to throw the ball down, feel a little more. That really hasn't happened so far in this game. Akeel Glass averaging 287 yards a ball game, but they haven't really looked down the field yet. No big plays, yeah. right? No big plays, and that's a, that's a credit to the Jaguars' defense. I think they have one play that's 20 yards. That's it. Right, everything else has been hemmed inside. Uh, they've they've kept the tackling has been fantastic. You know, all these offenses are predicated off of I'm going to get my guy in open space. I'm going to make you miss a tackle and make something big happen. The Jaguars haven't allowed it. They've been like glue on those receivers, and Glass hasn't been that comfortable in the pocket except for when they roll him out quick and they throw him out. Glass, 15 of 18 for 103 yards and the one touchdown. So uh, I, I think we might see some bigger numbers from him in the second and half. And Bentley only has about 30 yards rushing too. That's huge by the, by the, by the Panthers defense. Okay, stick with exactly. us. We'll be back with more action in the second half with Southern leading Alabama a and 14-7. Bring my text in person. I am, yeah. The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech-advanced engine in its class. We are still enjoying the halftime festivities here at Bumford Stadium. It's homecoming for the Southern Jaguars, and they lead Alabama A&M 14-7. to Let's take a minute now to just sit back and enjoy the human jukebox. Well, all the pageantry surrounding homecoming on full display here at Mumford Stadium as the human jukebox, as entertaining as ever. They're always exciting to watch. And, of course, let's talk about a really good football game we had here in the first half. And you look at some of the first-half stats, and the first thing that stands out to me, Jorge, is you look at the column number one, the rushing yards, 216 for Southern compared to only 47 for Alabama A&M. And they have the second leading rusher in the conference in Jordan Bentley. Well, and let me tell you something, too. When you, when you dominate the rushing yards like that, that means you are pounding on that defense over a period of time, right? And usually that showcases itself in the third and really the fourth quarter because it's a wear down effect on that defense. So I'm anxious to see that. And I agree with you. The surprising part for me is that Alabama a and Bentley hasn't gone off more. And again, I just credit that to some great defense. Uh, I feel like Southern has done a great job of anticipating the plays and they haven't uh, created lanes. They've stayed down the line allowing team defensive help. And that's what stopped big plays, especially in the passing game, but also in the running game. They haven't allowed that breakaway run. Well, and under the total yards, 255 for Southern to 150 for Alabama A&M. It almost suggests a bigger lead, but that is not the case. 
and you have to tip your cap to that Alabama A&M defense as they have risen to the occasion again and again in the first half, and I'm sure they'll try to do the same thing in half number two. That turnover negated that 100 yards, which allowed this game to be a 14-7 game. And again, I, I credit the Bulldogs for capitalizing on it. You get a turnover, you make seven. So make it happen. Okay, second half kickoff is coming up. Stick around. We'll be right back with more from Mumford Stadium. And welcome back to Mumford Stadium, everyone, where the Jaguars from Southern University lead the Bulldogs from Alabama A&M 14-7 on what is homecoming for the Southern Bulldogs. And uh, Jorge, you have to say, even at this point, it's uh, still anybody's ball game right now. Even though Southern has dominated the time of possession, Alabama A&M obviously is right there in the ball game. You're one big play away, right, from tying the game, and that's the thing that the Bulldogs do well. And they, they will get, get the ball plays. to start the second half. Exactly. And, but I want, we want to say this coming out of halftime. You know, we're, we're here at homecoming in Baton Rouge, a lot of excitement. And when you see that Southern band get out there and, and just this crowd feeds off of them so much, it's absolutely, you know, when they say it's showtime, it's entertainment, that's exactly what that was. And I had to give credit to the Bulldogs uh, band as well. Uh, I mean, it, it was this halftime here, it's real. It's a real deal. Well, in, in the human jukebox <laughs> is really entertaining all the time. But when you're here for homecoming, it is truly something special. And they put on a performance to to just really marvel at, to take a look at. And, and they were outstanding. And as we take a look here at some of the action from the first half, you can look at Skelton. That guy was also something to marvel at in the first half as he ran the football extremely well. Yeah, right out of the gate. I mean, he just made great decisions when he uh, baked to the, to the running backs early. He really stuck it in their gut, drove it in for a little bit. You see right there is a perfect shot of exactly what I'm talking about. He kept it in the chest of the running back for a while, pulls it out, gets a big run. 16 then, carries for 147 yards and a touchdown. <laughs> so I guess that was priority number one if you're in that Alabama A&M locker room at halftime. What do we do to stop that guy? Well, you know, I, I talked about it during the game a little bit. The Bulldogs did some adjustment in that second second quarter. And they started not allowing that outside run, which opened up more of the middle. And you saw more middle hits by Southern at that point. It'll be interesting to see what they do for the second half. And are they just going to say, look, we're shutting down the run. You're going to have to beat us in the air. And I think that's probably going to be what they're going to do because there's not much in the air that the Jaguars have been able to accomplish. Well, the second half kick is underway. And the Bulldogs on the return. And they're going to be out of bounds. That's Qualls at about the 25-yard line. So that's where they will start first and 10 on offense yeah and from that stat you saw a minute ago it was just 38 yards in the air so obviously the bulldogs are going to start about uh, stopping that uh, run but it'll but, be interesting to see of course akio glass the 6 5 215 pound junior will come out to start the second half this young man's been outstanding we mentioned before how he leads the swag in passing you talked about it at halftime let's see whether or not he takes some shots down the field in this ball game here in the second half. He did a good job of throwing underneath in the first half. This time, turns, fakes to Bentley, comes back with a screen the opposite way. That is Cameron Young, and Cameron Young is caught in a foot race. Papillon drags him down from behind. Jacoby Papillon saved what would have been a touchdown, and that may not have been a long pass, but what a big strike it was. Sean Ye Reams, number 75. Check him out. He's going to lead the charge here. He, that big old lineman gets out in front says, not today, my friend. And what did I talk about earlier? Getting guys in open space and can you tackle well? You have a big old tackle out there creating the way. That's how you make big plays like that. Boy, a lot of speed on that play by Cameron Young. So they come right back and they hand the ball to Jordan Bentley this time. Bentley, of course, 6'1", 195. He's a senior from Guntersville, Alabama. Last week he scored four touchdowns. He rushed. He had 39 carries for 197 yards those three touchdowns also caught a touchdown on a six-yard pass so this guy you know he's the he's the real deal he's the full package so second down coming up for the Bulldogs and that one is dropped that is number 89 Kendrick Johnson and I'm sure that's one he'd like to have again because Glass put it right in a bad place in his <laughs> right hands. between the eight and the nine <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't stick in him uh, great pass there and good fake again. You use Bentley again a little bit different than what the Jaguars do. They they do the option. They stick it in that running back and then they go ahead and run. 
here they ride it in that running back and they pull up and do a quick pass. Well, actually, took a drop pass here to maybe slow this drive down because they were on the move. Now it's third and about seven for a first down. Glass with some time looking wide open in the end zone. Zabrian Moore with the catch for the touchdown, and that had to be a missed assignment in the secondary because Zabrian Moore wide open for the touchdown, and we're going to be one point, an extra point away from being tied at 14 apiece. Wow. Yeah, that was that was. I don't know, wider than open. Yeah. <laughs> Opener, than, I mean, that's just crazy. Yeah, missed assignment here, no question about it. And again, that's one of those, you're so wide open, you get nervous when you're trying to catch it. Spencer Corey on for the extra point attempt, and he drilled it. And just like that, we have a tie ball game. 14-14, we'll be back with more action in just a minute. All caps, exclamation point. Exclamation point, cake slice emoji, candle emoji, emoji with the hard eyes. Well, all it took was a minute and five seconds for this ball game to be knotted up at 14-14, and that was an impressive drive by the Bulldogs. Oh, I mean, they got down to business. Right when it coming out of the half, what did we say? Uh, they're an explosive offense. They can make some big plays, and they can score quickly. Uh, they did just that. Spencer Corey will tee it up to the Jaguars, and it goes into the end zone, and it will come out to the 25 after the touchdown. So if you're Southern University, I guess you come out and you run the football. Yeah, and, and I think the, the tough part is, right, is they can't get caught up in the now we are a tied football game. They've been – these are the tough parts of games when you feel like – not feel like they've dominated the game. They've dominated the line of scrimmage, had a lot of success. But you look up and you're tied and you feel like you should be ahead. Sometimes – Teams start to get messed up by that, and, and really they just got to keep focusing on, focusing on execution and, and really can't get caught up in the scoreboard at this point. Of course, the Jaguars returned 16 starters this year off a team that won the West Championship last year. Nine of those starters on offense. So this time, Skelton gives to Washington on the jet sweep, and Holloway jumps on him in the backfield. Armani Holloway, the older brother of the twin. Now, he's only older by a few minutes, the way I understand it. But uh, he's the older brother. And he's very proud of that. As you can see, Skelton's numbers, uh, 16 for 147. That's before the net. Yeah, just a fine uh, first half. Most of that coming in the first half. Well, I, I can tell you right now, watching the, 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 the defense, they have decided we're not going to let you outside the tackles. Right, they they've adjusted that the way they're they're pressuring, the way they're shooting gaps, and they're going to make them go inside. And I'm interested to see if they can be strong enough inside because they haven't been at times well, deep that, enough that inside. Well, that 147 is very impressive, and they have yes. to take note of that. That was number 21, Craig Nelson on the carry. I need to mention he's in the game because Christopher Cheney, the backup running back, is not dressed for this game. He's out, listed as out. So we're going to see a lot of Nelson Skelton. Speaking of a lot of time, and finally he just threw it away, which was probably a smart decision because if he couldn't find anyone after that much time in the pocket, he probably needed to throw it away. Yeah, you know, the, the tough part of that play, watching that play, again, I'm sure the coaches for the Jaguars are going to be, he had a clean pocket, very clean pocket. They did a great job of giving him lots of time. He looked nervous from the jump. He, feet were moving, feet were moving. Never was really comfortable, and he wasn't pressured at all. And then just threw the ball away. Now, obviously, you'd rather him throw the ball away and have a turnover, but uh, he, he just doesn't look comfortable throwing the ball. Fake so punt. the Jaguars go to the fake, and they come up with a first down. So how about that, Coach Dawson Odoms? Getting Jadarian very Davis. aggressive. <laughs> Jadarian Davis with the short snap there. Look at him. It just goes right in. The Bulldogs didn't even see him coming. Yeah, you know what? And he made a nice move. He made a nice adjustment. Had, had he continued on the direction he was going, he would not have picked up that first down. So it was a good move to come back. And what a time for Dawson Odom to Odoms to pull off that fake punt. So the Jaguars will keep the football. They stay alive after picking up that first down on fourth down. So this time Skelton on the option, keeps it, pushes the defender into the ground, and then Skelton picks up another first down before Selmar Russell 
could rustle him out of bounds on the play. Well, you know what? They went right back to the well, right? It's set, it's set right off tackle. Took yep. it right up there. Throws the defender. Nice job there. So I said he, they were trying to make sure they didn't get outside the tackle. He did it right there with no problem. Another big first down right here. Skelton on the pass this time. And he completes it. Near the sideline, number 45, Denzel Davis, though, is there to make sure Hunter Register did not go too far after he made the catch. I think you're going to see the Bulldogs challenge them to go over the top. Their cornerbacks and all their defensive backs are tight. They're not allowing them to go very far. And, again, most of the passes are very, like, four yards and hitch hitch routes, etc. So they're going to challenge them to have to go up top. Unnecessary roughness. Number 88 on the offense. 15 yards, third down. So Jeremiah Houston, Jeremiah Houston, the big tight end, is guilty of unnecessary roughness, and that is a huge penalty against the Jaguars. I mean, that's going to push him way back. I mean, it's going to take away all that yardage and set up a second and 20. Yeah, that, that, that drives coaches absolutely crazy right there. So Skelton, who's run the ball extremely well today, now has it second and 20. Nice clean pocket. Fires has a man all by himself, and it's a completed pass and a first down for the Southern Jaguars. Travis Tucker made the catch in some kind of way. He was all by himself before Amir Barry could make the stop. Yeah, that, that had to be a missed, missed opportunity defensively on, on, on a... Because, man, I'll tell you, that he was wide open again. I was shocked how wide open he was. That's how you come back from that huge penalty on the play. This time, Skelton gives it right up the middle. And a nice game charging down inside the five is Nelson. Craig Nelson, the 5'10", 200-pound sophomore from Miami, getting to see some action tonight, I mentioned, because Chris Cheney is out of action. And Nelson, impressing. Yeah. And, and again, there's a... a a long time on the exchange to the running back, right? And the defenders thought he was going to keep it, and they started spreading, which created that hole. They helped create it. And again, the offensive line stayed glued to those defenders. That will set up a first and goal. Skelton on the keeper right up the middle, dragging would-be tacklers all the way down to the one-yard line. Marcus Kushini made the stop, but uh, Skelton is really showing off some power running tonight. Yeah, he doesn't get an easy yard. <laughs> right there is not an easy yard for sure. And you see Dawson Odoms looking on, the head coach of the Southern Jaguars. He's in his eighth season as the head coach, and what's impressive about that is he's never had a losing season at Southern. He's also won three championships in the West Western Division, 2013, 14, and last year in 2018. So this time, Skelton on the sweep left, has an opening, and he's knocked out of bounds. Right at the goal line, a big hit to deny him the score, and that was Quan Travis Kelly saving the touchdown. Yeah, they stacked the left. They did an overbalanced line to the left, and uh, I thought he was going to cut it up a little bit more, and he didn't. And, uh, again, the Bulldog defense did a great job of just dragging him out to the sidelines. Uh, if you're a defender, you want to take him to the sidelines, he'll run out of bounds, fine. That's Good your job extra defender. of uh, Kelly using that sideline to his advantage. So that brings up third and goal for the Jaguars turn and the hand inside and they did not make it that's holloway was one of the first bulldogs to get there and he knocked him back immediately a big hit by armani holloway and now some of the uh, bulldogs are saying the ball came out there was a great initial but surge. The official, excuse me but the official did mark it down so it's not a fault. right right but there was a great initial serve by uh, surge by the jaguars and the bulldogs came battling back to get that so fourth down and no hesitation on that southern sidelines. They go with the heavy package, double tight ends, and they're going to go for it on fourth down. Skelton dropped the ball. He recovers it again, but by that time, he has nowhere to go. So Skelton mishandled the snap, and the ball came out. And, and the boy, Bulldog that whole player play, took it from him. That whole play just blew up inside. Yeah, it wasn't happening. The bad snap. Mike Mills looked like he just took it, tore it from him. I believe it's Mike Mills, right? Mike Mills. Uh, I don't know, T Twilly Wilson. To Willie Wilson, yeah, Mike Willie Mills, Wilson. both are just obviously the Bulldogs did a great job of reading what was going on on the field. And look at the reaction from Dawson Odoms. Wow. Uh, wow. But that's what you want down. a coach to do. We'll, we'll get him next time. Yeah. 
And we do have an Time injured out. Southern player on the field. We're going to take a timeout in the boat booth. Be back in a minute with this ball game all tied at 14 apiece. And the Alabama A&M Bulldogs coming off a tremendous goal line stand with 8.37 to go here in the third quarter. A defense that had been allowing 34 plus points a game playing a tremendous game today as we have a flag on the field and it could be illegal procedure. Yeah, it's one of those ones you just go, oh, it was just a mess. <laughs> but they can't go back much further, so it didn't hurt them much. False start. Number 71, offense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. They're already on the one, so now you just split it. <laughs> Number 71 to Boris Butler, the guilty party on the play. But like you said, that, that penalty really is not going to hurt you that much. Alabama A&M want to be really careful with that football. They have the ball resting on the one, so their entire backfield is deep in the end zone. So Glass, with some time, steps up in the pocket. Fires has a man who came back to the football. Great job by Abdul Fatai Ibrahim. Coming back to working back to his quarterback and making the catch to get him out of a hole. Glass did a great job of buying more time for that route to be able to get to its full, full extent, right? I mean, he just kind of kept rolling and, and stayed in the middle and was ready to throw that ball. But that took a long time to process that, that play. This time, he gives it to Bentley, and Bentley is caught in the backfield, and he's going to lose yardage on the play. Number five, Montavious Gaines making the stop for that Southern defense. Uh, the defense for, for Southern is playing, playing fantastic. You know, Gaines is one of those guys that Coach Odoms wanted to see play a lot better, and over the last couple of weeks, he's really stepped up his game. So that's going to bring up second and 11 after the loss of one. Glass fakes the out pattern, throws it down the sideline, had a man. Ball hit him in his hands, but Ibrahim could not hang on because Montavious Gaines was right there to make another big play. <laughs> yeah, when you get a face mask in your back and you're trying to catch a ball, it doesn't feel good. You don't tend to hang on to a ball a whole lot. Glass did a great job of faking the short pro and then threw it long. Had a little bit of a window, just got it there too late. Excitement of the Southern coaches on the sideline there. You know, the Bulldogs, the excuse me, the Bulldogs actually have nine starters coming back. We talked about all the people Southern had on offense. They have nine starters returning on offense and seven on defense. So this is an experienced team coming back for the second year under Connell Maynard. Glass fires near the sidelines, has Bentley still on his feet, but there are a lot of blue jerseys in the vicinity, and he's going to be thrown down for a big loss on the play. That, that play did not have anything going. Glass looked left first, thought the defense would shift when he turned back around to throw to Bentley. Uh, again, the Jaguars read their reads properly, and they were ready for that ball. Jordan Lewis and Lunkins were there to make the stop. So once again, that Southern defense rising to the occasion. Brandon Hinton, number 24, goes back deep to return the punt, and the Jaguars should end up with really good field position out of this one. See, Spencer Corey gets it up and away, and it's a nice punt. He drives Hinton way back, and Hinton could not make the catch. Now he tries to pick it up on the move. Still on his feet, and he's going to be dropped short of the 30. So great coverage by Alabama A&M of what was a sensational punt by Spencer Corey. That's how you flip the field. And it's also how you give your coach a, a Maalox moment there or some Tums. When you don't catch the ball in the air, get away from it. It's radioactive. Let it go. When he started chasing that ball, there's moments where you're like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Okay, he's got it. So here's uh, the Darius Skelton again trying to get into the end zone, but uh, good defense again by the Bulldogs. And then this time it's Ben, and he's knocked backwards. So once again, the Bulldogs rise into the occasion. Skelton near the goal line, and he's hammered out of bounds. And you can see right there, he mishandled the snap just a little bit, and it threw the timing off on the play. So this time, Skelton gives it to Ben around the right side, and he's working hard for some short yardage right there. But a nice job by Ben 
to get what he could on the play before Mike Mills stepped up to close that door. Yeah, the one thing about the Bulldogs defense, they've risen up several times to get the stop. Skelton, second and nine, front of pressure, throws it up in the air, and he's got a man. Hunter Register. Boy, uh, under all types of pressure was Ladarius Skelton. Price was right in his face, number nine, Marquise Price. But he got the ball away, and Register was all by himself. And Southern goes with pace here. Getting right to the line of scrimmage. Wow, what a big play by the Jaguars. This time, Skelton pulls it out, keeps it into open field. He steps off Mills, and he picks up a nice gain. So Skelton doing a great job running the ball. Trenton McGee came up to put the clamps on him at the end. Probably going to be at 200 yards. <laughs> but that's the third time tonight we've seen a receiver wide open all by himself. One time for A&M and twice for Southern. Yeah, no, and, and that's a communication problem. And you and you sure coaches are, are trying to figure out why that happens and why it happened so bad. So Skelton looking at a second and short. Going to keep him himself. Coming around the left side, sweeping left. Skelton dancing down the sidelines. And he has another first down for the Jaguars. Joshua M. Williams will get credit for the tackle, but not before Skelton got the first down and more. One thing I noticed about Skelton, he likes, he would much rather always head to the sidelines than up the middle. I think the last two runs, he's actually had more green in the middle if it had taken a step to the right instead of heading outside, but he likes heading to that outside. He likes being on that outside uh, by the sideline. Jaguars on offense in the middle of a big drive. Skelton fakes the zone sweep. The jet sweep, and now he's in trouble. And he's going to be sacked again. Quan Travis Kelly getting into the backfield and yanking Skelly down. Yelking Skelton down. Yeah, I'll tell you, at the end of that play, he kind of lays down, right? He, he's, he's, and it's not like I'm injured. Watch this right here. When he goes down here, he'll just stay on the ground for a little bit. And it's really a frustration type thing. He's like, ah. Oh. You can just tell he's like, why did I do that? I should have. I had the right side open. I could have run uh, towards that outside, but he really was trying to get a pass off. Uh, and I think his frustration laying down on that field at the end of that play was like, ah. Marcus Cushiony forced him out of the pocket for the big sack. So this time, Skelton fires one near the sideline. Devon Ben still on his feet before he is hit hard and knocked out of bounds on the play. Juan Travis Kelly again helping out on the tackle. Ben showed great balance on this play. It was, a, it was a pass over his head. He jumped up and grabbed it. Watch the balance there. Keeps his balance, gets hits again. Stays on his feet, even on the sidelines. He just won't go down. Caleb Riley also putting the shoulder pad in on him near the sideline there with a big hit, number 24. So Southern now looking at third. They need 15 yards to keep the drive going and pick up a first down. So Skelton will operate out of the empty backfield. He has three wide receivers to his left. He's looking that way. Now he pulls it down, still looking that way. Fires deep, has a man open, and it's a touchdown for the Southern Jaguars. Yes, indeed it is. Wasn't quite sure he got the feet down, but he did. And what a job by Skelton on the throw and a big catch for the touchdown. Yeah, I didn't think he got in there originally at first, but I'll tell you, I thought there was going to be a flag called uh, just a little bit past that right here. Let's see if he gets in here. He knocks it across. He had his foot down at about the, what, one-yard line going over. It went over the pylon, so I guess that is a touchdown. The pylon is good as gold, and Hunter Register. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Register it up, right? <laughs> Bring it up. The previous play is on the further review. Yeah, if we could back up that play and take a look at it. Caleb Riley, the defender uh, for the Bulldogs, you'll see him pulling on his jersey, if you can see it. I'm not sure you'll be able to see it in that angle, but he was pulling on his jersey before he broke away. And I thought the flags were going to come flying there, and I, I, I couldn't believe they didn't throw a flag. And then you get the touchdown throw right there. I don't think there's enough to overturn it. I think that's a touchdown. A yeah. good physical play by Hunter Register because, like you said, there was a lot of contact going on. He got strong, did not let him break his stride. Right. Made the catch, a perfect throw from Skelton 
and the Jaguars, at this point right now, unless this thing is reversed, they have a touchdown on the board. Right. And actually what's funny is the separation was caused by a defender pulling on the jersey, and when it let go, he went backwards, and he, he almost you know catapulted him forward uh, to give him all that, uh, all that room there. But great job by the Jaguars, and they found a way to get their own big play. But Register did what the coaches preach night and day. Do not let them knock you off your route. Do not let them knock you off your stride. He stayed in stride, went down there, and uh, from everything we've seen, he was going to be rewarded with a touchdown here in just a minute. I was going to say, you played some tight end in your days right around this area. You know about trying to stay on that path and how linebackers or defenders will try to either mess up your rhythm, mess up the way you're heading into your route, and right there, he just kept going. And again, uh, here's a wrap up. That was our referee, Y.N. Myers, confirming the touchdown on the play from Ladarius Skelton to Hunter Register. Good throw, great catch in the end zone, and just a good combination on that play. Yeah, and, and, and credit to the referees, right? That's twice they've gone to, and again, one time they went twice in the same play to look at it twice to get it right, and they've got it right again. Uh, definitely a touchdown. And again, at first sight, I wasn't sure it was a touchdown, but when you saw the replay there, uh, he certainly got in. So Martel Fontenot, the sophomore from Zachary, Louisiana, on to attempt the extra point, and his kick is good. And we have a flag on the field, so let's check that out and see what was the call on the play. Y.N. Myers getting pretty busy now here in the second half with 3.20 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, so they go back on the field. Number 42, retry. So they are going to retry the kick. And I'm sure Martel Fontenot is saying, like, thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just put him under a little pressure. But uh, you're looking back at this one and... You know, Southern just did a good job on this drive. And yeah. that, you know, they got that big punt uh, that really kept things going for them in this half. So Fontenot gets it set up again. He's going to have to back up. Gets a good hole, a good snap, and his kick is good. He said no problems at all for him. And just like that, Skelton to register, and the Jaguars extend their lead. To 21-14. We'll be back. This engine in its class. Twenty-one fourteen, Southern leading Alabama AM with 320 to go here in the third quarter. Jaguars just coming off a nice drive where they scored a touchdown to take that lead. So can the Bulldogs answer? It is Qualls with a big stick by the Jaguars. He's going to be dropped just short of the 25-yard line. I think he got hit by his own guy, Charles Shepard. He kind of ran into him. <laughs> That's what stunned him. you got to watch that friendly <laughs> fire, man. It's, it's tough out there as we take a look at some of the scores from around the SWAC this afternoon. Alabama State rolling. After losing that big game to Alabama A&M, 27-0. That is a final. In the third quarter, that's our game, 21-14 Southern. And then look at Grambling all over Texas Southern, 55-20. to And then Jackson State and Arkansas Pine Bluffs there in the first quarter. They're just getting warmed up there. And so Alabama A&M with the football now. Akeel Glass drifts away to his left, fires one, and he just threw that one away. And here's an interesting fact about the Bulldogs because... They've had, the third quarter has been their best scoring quarter all season long. When you add up all the points from the third quarter, they scored 100 points in the third quarter. So, and we've seen a little bit of that. They're showing a little bit of that today. And the other thing is you can't dismiss them because in four of their five wins, the Bulldogs have had to rally in the fourth quarter to come back, and two of those games went to overtime. So they're never out of it. Well, we, we talked coming out of the half, how quick they can score, and they did. And so Bentley is wrapped up. Lunkins and company on the stop. Calvin Lunkins, as we, we mentioned, he of Calvin, Calvin, Calvin. Actually, it's the for Calvin. The of Calvin, Calvin, and Calvin, yes. and Calvin. It's uh, for a flag down on the field. We mentioned that he has two brothers named Calvin earlier in the show, and his father's name is Calvin. What's interesting here, I wonder if he's going to get called there for unnecessary roughness. He was kind of bouncing on the on the on. on on Bentley after that play was over. 
trying to, I'm trying to see if that's what they're calling right here. You know, after the play, personal foul, nope. hands to the face, number 26, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Yep. Good call. That's going to be a first down for the Bulldogs after the penalty on the Jaguars. Yes. So you'll take a first down any way you can get it. Yeah, I think I saw in the rules you can't use a player as a pogo stick after the play's over. <laughs> it's written somewhere in there. <laughs> Akil Glass drifting to his right this time, keeping his eyes downfield. Launches one. That's a guy wide open. That is Ibrahim, and he's going to score. A touchdown for the Bulldogs. Abdul Fatai Ibrahim. And what a great job by Akil Glass rolling out to his right, but he kept his eyes downfield. You, you said it perfectly on the call. Not one time did he look anywhere else but downfield. He bought time, and you see him wide open. And, you know, sometimes when a quarterback's on the move like that, it's just tough for a defensive back to be on that island all by yourself. It's just a tough cover, and you can only cover for so long. Well, you figure so much time's gone by, you got to look to see what happened, and that's when they get separation. So Spencer Corey's kick is good, and just like that, the Bulldogs, and it did not take long, <laughs> have come back to tie this game at 21 apiece thanks to the touchdown pass from Akil Glass to Ibrahim, who just got loose in the secondary. Uh, you know, if you talk about teams that stay in character, right? You can look at how they play and what they've done in the past and what they do. I mean, that's exactly what you can look at right here. I mean, here's a team that plays well in the third quarter. They come back. They have big plays. And that's exactly what they did. And if you were wondering about Mumford Stadium, it is named after Coach A.W. Mumford. He's the former Southern football coach from 1936 to 1961. Southern's record holder for coaching wins. He has 180. SWAC wins 110. And seasons coached. 25 seasons coached and games coached 253. That's impressive. Led the Jaguars to 11 SWAC championships. That's that that's a, that's why they name a stadium after you. Hey, you know, when I see coaches that stay somewhere, whatever institution they stay at for a period of time, I always just think of how many men that they've been able to, to work with, to to mentor, and influence. To, to, yeah. to influence, to take them through. Because whatever anyone wants to say about what, what football players go through and where they go, they get taught uh, to, to not quit, to execute, and to work well as a team. And coaches like that uh, usually are leaders of, of great men. And, and great, good to see him uh, get rewarded with, uh, uh, with the naming of the stadium. And once again, the kick goes through the end zone as Jones just watches it go back there. So Southern will start on offense, first and 10 from their 25. And that cannon's got some, has uh, been used tonight, hasn't it? <laughs> I know that the Jaguars would like to see it pop off a couple more times. <laughs> I know the last one kind of taught me off guard there. <laughs> you know, we talked to Dr. Belton at, at the half, and uh, he talked just about what a perfect homecoming week it's been with all the festivities and stuff. And now we're locked into just a great football game here with 2.36 to go in the third quarter, and we're all tied at 21 apiece. This time the handoff goes to Ben, and he slips down as he tries to cut it back. He had a little running room as he tried to cut back. It would have been interesting to see if he'd have been able to keep his footing how far he would have gone on that play. Yeah, they had some more out of that. And, again, they faked that play all game long with him coming around, and they faked it, and they finally gave it to him. Skelton operating with an empty backfield. Looking to throw. Pulls it down quickly. That might have been a design run, and he takes it upfield for yardage. I mean, he has been very impressive running the football today, and that is a first down for the Southern Jaguars. It is so much stress on a defense when you have a, a quarterback that runs like that that it's an extra person that's unaccounted for, and how do you account for him without giving up something else? It is incredibly difficult. Uh, for defenses to account for a running back, like a quarterback that runs like that. Skelton on first down, pulls it out on the zone read, and once again calling his own number, working his way upfield for a nice gain by the Jaguars. So I don't think, I don't he's he done that consistently off. the whole game. <laughs> he has. I don't think he likes to hand off. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's doing a good job in his reading. He got five yards on that play, yeah. so if they're going to allow you to get five yards a pop, he's probably going to keep pulling it out. 
Uh, so it's been, he's been very impressive from reading that zone read and making the right calls on that. As Southern comes up with a second and five with the ball resting right on the 45-yard line. Skelton's going to pass this one. Has a man open, and that is Jamar Washington. Hauls it in. He's 5'7", 165-pound junior. To Willie Nelson there to help out on the stop. And Trenton McGee also helping on the play. I like the play call. The play call there was really good. And again, Skelton, great decision. Got rid of the ball real quick. This time he hands off again. It's going to be Ben. He's hopping around in the backfield before he finally puts his head down and just gets as much as he could get right there. Marcus Cushiony comes in and makes the stop for that Bulldogs defense. And, you know, that didn't look like much. But that's almost five yards. That's like four and a half yards on the carry. Yeah, th then they're mixing it up, and they're making the Bulldogs have to think. When you have to think so much playing, you're just slower. Skelton cranks one deep down the field. He had a man, and that was close to being another touchdown as Jamar Washington made a dive and just could not come up with the catch. The coverage there by Adrian Portlock, but Washington had a shot. I think Skelton's long throws have been really, really good. Uh, the adjustments by the receivers, you see it right through his hands. I mean, that, that's a ball you got to catch. Is it a hard call, uh, catch? You bet. But but that's one you got you to pull one out for your quarterback. Well, he put that ball in the perfect spot. His guy yeah. was going to get it, or no one was going to get that pass. So a nice pass by Skelton. It goes for not, but Washington would love to have another shot at that. Oh, he would. So Skelton on third down, starts up the middle, backs it up, comes back to the outside, fires near the sidelines, and he has a man. That is a completed pass on the play. Number 45 was the receiver making a nice catch over there near the sidelines. That is Makai Hammond, the wide receiver, getting his first action of the night. Yeah, he made himself available. He turned with his numbers, showing his quarterback he's open. Skelton reminds me of one of those uh, one of those point guards. Well, we are again in the quarter. I'll, take, I'll pick that up when we get back up. The third quarter is in the books, and we are all tied at 21 apiece. Jorge and I will be right back after this quick timeout, a 21-21 game. Southern and Alabama in it. You answering my text in person? I am, yeah. The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech-advanced engine in its class. Yeah, that'd be great. Southern University on the move now as we get set to start the fourth quarter. They're operating first and ten with the ball resting on the 34-yard line. And it's once again that guy Skelton on the keeper, still on his feet, fights his way to the sticks, and he comes up with another first down for the Jaguars. I'll tell you, that offensive line has just done a, a great job. I mean, I don't know how to say it. I've said it a lot of different ways. But, man, they, the play calling... Uh, pulling tight ends. I mean, there was a uh, Jeremiah Houston leading a block there. Your yeah, Jonathan up. Bishop, also big number yeah. 65 with a crushing block. You know, Coach said that he's their best offensive lineman, and you really saw him clearing out some space right there. So another first down for the Jaguars. Just about in the red zone. This time, Skelton fakes the give inside, pitches outside. And it's going to be Washington, and he gets down to the 10-yard line. The little guy puts his head down and delivered a blow. Jamar Washington, Ooh, all 5'7", and 165 pounds. He's got an accelerator, doesn't he? Watch him coming to your screen here. Boom! There he is. Well, well he, he just, saw the crease. Yeah, he kicks it in. And he hit it quickly. So another first down for the Jaguars. This one looks like a first and goal with the ball resting on the 10-yard line. Skelton hands to Washington on the jet sweep. Follows a couple of those big guys, and he takes it all the way down to about the six-yard line. So the rushing yardage for the Jaguars has just been tremendous in this ballgame. Yeah, and, and the thing about the Bulldogs, they've certainly given up a lot of yards, but when it, when things get tight, again, we're here in this, in this uh, you know, inside the five-yard line. That's when the Bulldog defense has shown its might. And again, especially in fourth down, they've had two big fourth down stops. I want to say the last one, there was, what, second and one or second and two, and they stopped them all three downs? Yeah, they also had a goal line stand today, but how about that Ladarius Skelton? 26 carries, 
for 192 yards and a touchdown. He's averaging 7.4 a carry, and we have whistles on the play as he takes the snap from center there. And we will see what the officials have on the play. Our referee, Y.N. Myers. Timeout. Southern. And there's a timeout on the field for the Southern Jaguars, so they're going to talk about things. Big down coming up. You don't want to miss an opportunity to score points when you're knocking at the door and you're that close. Yeah, and I think that's what they're doing right here, right? I think he's setting the stage. He's saying, look, we've been down here twice and gotten stopped and haven't gotten seven, right? If we'd have handled our business, we'd, we'd, we could create some separation here. And right now we need to handle our business and let's get seven here. And they correct this play, but also set the tone for these next few plays. As you look at the standings, and you can see Alabama A&M in the east with a 2 and one record and the Southern Jaguars with a 3 and one conference record, it's quite clear for Southern, if they win out, they're going to be the Western champs again. So, I mean, the, it's right there in front of them. They can see what it is. Alabama A&M, obviously, in the thick of it. But Alcorn has been so impressive with that 4-0 and o record. So, Skelton, looking into the corner of the end zone, has register over there. Actually, it was T.J. Bedford. Good defense on the play. Joshua M. Williams. He was on an island out there by himself, and he did a great job of not letting T.J. Bedford get his hands on that football. Wow. Uh, I thought he had some interference in there, but there was no flag. The refs were right there. Well, Southern's going back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Third down and goal to go with the ball resting on the six-yard line. Scarif Skelton looking in the same direction. This time he jumps out of the pocket and he's in for the touchdown. What a great move by Ladarius Skelton. Puts his head down and he sets off the fireworks here in Mumford Stadium. Yeah, that was two or three great moves by him. And again, he was still trying to throw that ball. And he may have injured his wrist on the play. He's on the ground and he's holding his arm. And we're not sure what's, sure exactly what's wrong. But you're right. He made a couple of great moves, put his head down near the goal line, took the punishment, and got the touchdown. Yeah, he was. Now watch these moves right here. He wants to throw it right there. He didn't like what he saw. And then that move there, and then he does one more, I believe. Well, I guess when he puts the hammer down to go in. But see, he took all of that impact on that right shoulder, his throwing arm. And you could tell he when he when he hit that ground, he's like, oh. Boy, hopefully was, he's okay. Yeah, he took a, a tough hit right there from Joshua M. Williams. He put that shoulder down and, and it stuck him pretty good. But Skelton was that close to the goal line. He would not be denied. The extra point attempt is good, and the lead. Now Southern up 28 to 21. Not much. How about you? Are you answering my text in person? I am, yeah. The Nissan Altima, now offering the most tech advanced engine in its class. Yeah. We have 12 minutes and 54 seconds to go in this ball game. And right now, the Southern University Jaguars have jumped back out in front after a big scoring drive, 28 to 21 after the Darius Skelton ran it in for a touchdown, his second touchdown run of the ball game. So now the ball will go back to the Bulldogs as Qualls lets it roll out of the end zone so they will get it. First and 10 from their 25, and we will see if they can answer the call. Yeah, but I, I mean, this is a great football game. You've got a lot of, you've got some big plays. You have some busted plays. You have some great defensive performances. You have some great offensive performances. You have two different style quarterbacks that have made plays for their teams in their own way. Uh, and you've had some great coaching on both sides of the ball. I mean, it's a really well-played football game. And right now, the the, the uh, it, it's now the time for the Bulldogs. Are they going to answer or not? Head coach Connell Maynard, of course, and the Bulldogs offense. Dwayne Taylor, the offensive coordinator. We will see what they dial up on this possession. We're going to talk a little more about Connell Maynard in just a second because he's an interesting kind of dude. I mean, he's he's really, like they used to say in the old days, he's a cool cat. He's got a, <laughs> a lot of things going on, and he's an interesting guy to hear about. But you saw Bentley right there. 
it's picking like a scrum up about run. three or four yards inside. So call that a scrum run. Everyone lined up and they just yeah. kept pushing the ball. Just keep push, moving it forward. Keep moving the ball. What did Hank Stram used to say? Keep matriculating the ball down the field, That's gentlemen. Right. So this time it goes to Bentley again with some run and he room inside and he picks up a first down. Benjamin Harris, one of the guys on the stop for the Southern Jaguars. Again, now it's time for your defense. I mean, I, I talked about the Bulldogs, time for them to answer offensively, but obviously uh, uh, from the Jaguars' perspective, it's okay. Can you get a big stop here and let's turn this ball over? Let, let's, let's turn it back to our offense and let's try to, to stretch this thing out. So, you know, both teams here, they got to answer. Akeel Glass turns and he hands to Bentley again. And once again, that pile moves forward a couple of yards for Bentley on the play. But I've been very impressed with the patience young Akeel Glass has shown in this ballgame. He has not forced it. He had the one deep pass when the guy was wide open by himself. Right. And then he had the other little underneath pass that he threw underneath. And we saw number 80, Cameron Young, race all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. But he has not really forced the ball down the field. Even on that run right there, Joshua Williams, a big offensive lineman there, they do a lot of pulls and pull their guards or their tackles uh, into to trap block and did a great job there leading that run. Glass with some time to pass. Rolls out to his right, fires in a crowd, and he has a man. It's Bentley who comes up with the catch. A lot of blue jerseys around him, but uh, he still hauled in the pass. I, I thought that was an interception all the way, but he squeezed it right in there. He saw what he was looking, and he just pulled the trigger right through there. Look. Two defenders. Calvin Munkins on the stop for that Southern defense. Big third down. Going to set up a third, about a yard for the Bulldogs. Glass calling out the signals. Turns and hands to Bentley straight ahead, and he has a first down for the Bulldogs offense. Big Joshua Williams, number 76, again, led that play through. Uh, they, they obviously like running off of his rear is how we call it, right? Jordan Bentley is a tough guy to stop when you only need a yard for the first There's down. Big Josh Williams right there. Uh, he came into this game. Bentley was closing in on 1,000 yards. He had 859 coming in. And so far today, he has 41 yards gained. But they've done a good job of with the underneath stuff. A lot of the short game underneath, Glass has been successful with. This time, looking to pass. Has a man wide open. Zabrian Moore with a catch. And they say he stepped out of bounds over there. But Moore did a nice job before Jordan Eastling, the transfer from Texas State, came over to get the stop. What you call a little bit too much cushion. <laughs> So another first down for the Bulldogs. Glass turns and hands to Bentley again. And once again, the Jaguars reacted quickly. But I tell you what, he just he just keeps pounding it in there, and, and it takes a toll. Big Hunter Clay uh, watching him on the backside. Yeah. That was like a squash sandwich right there at Bentley. Yeah, Hunter Clay is 275 pounds. And we have an injured Jaguars player on the field. Can't see who it is right now. They're taking a look at him right there, and it's uh, Benjamin Harris, the 5'11", 190-pound sophomore from Peoria, Illinois. And he gets up, and you can see he's walking gingerly as he heads to the sideline. He's one of them great tacklers I talked about. Coming into this game, he had 50 tackles. Uh, so he was leading the team in tackles. So you don't want to see uh, a guy like Harris lead the field. And he certainly, uh, gingerly is the word uh, as he leaves the field. You can see Connell Maynard, the head coach right there for Alabama A&M. He's a former Arena Football League star. Led the Tampa Bay Storm to the 93 and the 94 championship as we go back to the live action. Glass throwing it underneath and a nice catch by Zabrian Moore. He's that little cushion. He had that little hole wide open right there, and he came away with a nice stop. Good hands on the plate. Caught it in his hands. Well, you mentioned earlier Glass's poise has been really, really good to see. He hasn't forced anything. He's comfortable in the pocket. He doesn't mind, uh, you know, giving the ball to his running back. He's not trying to do too much. 
So we have whistles on the play. It was first down for the Bulldogs. When four people move and the center doesn't snap the ball. Ball start. <laughs> Offense. Number 87. Five yards. First down. If we could take a look and finish that story about Connell Maynard. Because I said he's an interesting guy. You see, led Tampa Bay Storm to the 93-94 Arena Bowl Championship. And he was Jamie Foxx stand-in for the movie Any Given Sunday. So when you saw Jamie Foxx throwing all those beautiful strikes down the field, really, Connell Maynor was the guy. And he said they got to hang out. He said Jamie Foxx was pretty cool. Got to hang out with Jamie a little bit. Uh, he probably didn't get to share the check with Jamie. <laughs> no, I think there was uh, quite a discrepancy between the two checks. So Akil Glass, this time, fakes the reverse. Looking down the sideline, has a man open. That's Sabrian Moore, and it's a touchdown for the Bulldogs. So they answer the call with a perfect strike from Akil Glass to Sabrian Moore. Glass did a phenomenal job selling that ball. Look how calm he looks and how relaxed on both of those fakes in that one play. And he turns around, puts the ball in the perfect spot. Man, you have to trust your offensive line to sell that fake yes. the way he did. Well executed play. I mean, he looked like he was having lunch back there. like <laughs> Nowhere. You wouldn't think there were like 11 guys trying to take his head off. It's confidence. So, Spencer Corey on for the extra point, and his kick is good. And just like that... Behind Akil Glass and Zabrian Moore, Timeout. the Bulldogs have come back to tie the game at 28 apiece. We'll be right back. Candle emoji, emoji with the hard eyes. And with 8.32 to go in this ball game, it's turned into a good old-fashioned shootout. The Southern Jaguars and the Alabama A&M Bulldogs all tied at 28 apiece. Keep in mind, it was 14-7 at the half. Yeah, and I mean, just look at the, well, you see the score right there. I mean, there's been action in every single quarter, everything moving on. And, and again, each team answers. See what happens on this kickoff. It's returnable. So the Jaguars on the return, and a nice return it is, almost to the 30-yard line. That is where number 19, Kendrick Jones, brings it back and that is where Southern will start first and 10 and so far in the second half Skelton has done a really good job you know driving the show well, and and he's mixing some passes right I think in, the, in the first half you didn't see uh, as well uh, executed uh, the passing game but I think in the second half he's added just enough of that to keep uh, the Bulldogs off balance Skelton gives inside, and that is Nelson, and he is yanked down from behind. Nelson fighting hard to try to get some extra yardage. And yeah, there wasn't a whole lot, a whole lot of room there. Craig Nelson, a, a 5'10", 200-pound sophomore from Miami. Saw a little action earlier in the game, and now he's getting another taste. Skelton on a second and eight. Nice clean pocket. Throws it off near the sidelines. Has Nelson. And he advances the football upfield. That's going to be it's going to be probably two yards shy of a first down after that one. But a nice catch by Craig Nelson. And it's good to see Skelton healthy. Remember when he scored that last touchdown, he laid in that end zone. But looked like his wrist or his shoulder may have bothered him. But right now, I mean, he looks, uh, he's one tough guy. No doubt about it. He's back in there leading his team. Sometimes you just get the wind knocked right out of you, but he's back. Skelton operating with an empty backfield. Has three wide receivers to his left. Looking to pass under pressure. He gets it up, and he just did not have time because the pressure was in his face from the start. Yeah, that was a timing pattern right there. I mean... He knew where he was going with that ball as soon as it was snapped, and, and good thing he did because uh, they were coming really fast. So that's going to bring up a fourth down and short, and I think Skelton wanted to go for it, but Dawson Odom said, uh, maybe not. Come stand by me for a little bit as they get set to punt the football away. Back to return it. Odo Hilaire is back to return for the Bulldogs. Number six. And the snap is a bad snap. Baraja chases it down, and he gets the kick away. 
And I guess anything is success on that play for Southern because what could have happened was Alabama oh. State could have had the ball deep down in Southern territory. So give Baraja a lot of credit for getting that one out of there after the bad snap. Yeah, that thing was way over his head. And he shows great calm right here. He's lucky that it got just high enough to get over the defenders. Yeah, I think Dawson Odoms will take that, though, because oh. the, the other possibility was not one he wants to think about at this point. So oh. Alabama A&M will get the football right back after driving for a touchdown on their last possession. This time he comes back with the pass to Ibrahim, spinning and taken down by Eastling, number 10, Jordan Eastling. The big transfer from Texas State starting to make his presence felt out there on the field. He watches film. That's all I can say. He, he was in the place he needed to be. He didn't leave his, uh, his responsibility, and he was right there to make the play. That play could have been huge because he was there and he had sure tackling. That, that stopped that to just a one-yard gain. You look at these Alabama A&M receivers, and Ibrahim is averaging 18.2 a catch. Brian Jenkins, 19 yards, and then Zabrian Moore, 20 yards a catch. So these guys are all big hitters, and that was Jordan Bentley just taking the pile with him, just driving everybody forward. Davin Cotton, this freshman from Shreveport, made the stop. It looks like they're getting more surge on the on running now. Uh, the Bulldogs are against the uh, Jaguars defensive line. Bentley again tries the middle and this time uh, he doesn't have the crease. Number 54, Davin Cotton again coming in to help out. So was Lunkins also there. Yeah, he likes hot dogging a little bit when he gets that. that well, tackles. He, he picked up another first down on the power run. So just like that, Alabama a and converts, and they have a first down with the ball resting right now on the 41-yard line. Glass has some pressure in his face, and he just throws it away. He was threw it in the direction of Cameron Young, but he might have just been unloading that football because he was running out of time in the pocket. And now we do have a pause in the action. We have a flag down right near midfield. I think they Roughing the passer. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Number 93. 15 yards. Automatic. First down. That is C.J. Bryant. The guilty party on the play. The big 6'1", 295-pound senior. Boy. Yeah, let's see if we can see that. Wow. You called it. You thought it might be roughing the passer, and that's what they had. They're getting crazy on these roughing the passers. <laughs> Akil Glass hands it inside to Bentley again. And right there is the Kavion champion and company trying to make sure he didn't get too far down the field. Usually the quarterback at least has to fall and pretend it hurt, right, to get the flag <laughs> thrown. That time he got bumped, and he still got the call. All right, I'll, it, it, I'll, I'll be quiet on that one. The way the rules are today, it, it's a, it's a tough call take, to make sometimes. He did take an extra step and a half that he could have stopped, That's right? because they were also anticipating that he had an opportunity to stop, yes. and he didn't stop. Yes. So this time, Glass throws behind his receiver. He was trying to hit Anthony Howard, the big tight end, but Caleb Carter was right there and made it a very difficult pass to complete. Yeah, we're in crunch time. It's 520. You've got the Bulldogs coming. Uh, the Bulldogs defense has stepped up several times now to, to make something happen. The, the, the Jaguars, as good as they played, I think, most of the game, now is the time they've got to make some plays. They've got to make a play to make something happen if they're going to win this game. Yeah, and they have a lot of big guys on defense, a lot of talent on defense. Harris can make a big play. We have a timeout on the field. Timeout. Alabama a and The second charge. Timeout of the half. Second timeout. charge timeout to Alabama a and We'll be back in just a minute, 28-28 point cake slice emoji candle emoji emoji with the hard eyes third and seven coming up for the bulldogs a big play in this ball game with 520 to go in the game akil glass 
turns and hands. He flips it to Ibrahim on the reverse. Ibrahim coming around the right side. Gets a big block right there. Still on his feet. And he's into the end zone for a touchdown. And I'm looking around for the flag, and I do see it right there. And I think it was on Shanye Reams. We will take a look, but he kind of had a hold of someone, and we will see what the call is from Y.N. Myers. But what a beautiful play by Connell Maynard and company. I, I was actually going to congratulate Reams for how well he kept pushing down the field. But Personal foul, face mask, offense, number 79, 15 yards from the spot of the foul, replay, First down. So it's Robert Samuel. Correction. Play. Third down. Call, call for the face mask on yeah, the play. Right here. Boy, that hurts because what a well-designed play and what a great run by Abdul Fatai Ibrahim taking it in for a touchdown that will not count. And you can see the Bulldog sidelines, they are not too happy about that call at all. Now you have a, a huge third down here where you're basically just kind of trying to get half. It's third and 20 now, so you're, you're getting pushed way back. You go from having a touchdown to looking at a third and 20 for Akeel Glass and the offense for Alabama A&M. Glass, this time hands to Bitley on the draw, and there's not much going in there. He just goes straight ahead on the play. That, does that play surprise you? Yeah, it does. I, I was thinking like a nice 10 yard and out to give you a, give you a shot because I, I don't think they have a whole lot of confidence in their in their kicker. So you had to figure they're going to try to go twice. I, all all Although, I can think of is they thought they could fool them on the play. Well, they're going to go kick it. Vince Sikori is out on the field. Well, in that case, their run they knew where they wanted to place it. They probably knew where their kicker was more comfortable on the right hash. Well, he's on and is a punter in this situation. He has no holder. Yeah, he's, I guess he's going to try to punt the football unless the holder forgot to come out onto the field. Spencer Corey is also the punter, so he could have been back there. I, you cannot the punt the ball from your 31-yard line. No. It'll so, be a 30-second timeout. So taking a look at some of the action early on in the ball game, and you saw right there Glass to Ibrahim. And then Glass, this time, spins it over to Bentley. And that was the play where we thought he had the first down, but they said he was stopped short. Xavier Moore also having a big first half. So is Cameron Young. And then there's the defense putting the pressure on Glass, and he found the man. That was a big hit. And then Glass with a perfect throw with the touchdown to Ibrahim. I mean, he's had a nice game so far. That one on the money to Moore. And then rolling out of his pocket, looking downfield on the right. Again getting Qualls involved. And he's just that kind of guy. I mean, he's not leading the swag for nothing in passing. I mean, he can get the job done, and we're seeing a nice performance today from the junior from St. Louis, Missouri. This time, it's going to be a 49-yard field goal attempt coming on by Spencer Corey. And now we have another stoppage of play on the field. Illegal substitution. Defense, 12 in formation, 5 yards, 4th down. Boy, that could be the difference between missing and making a field goal. The defense had 12 men on the field, so he's going to get 5 extra yards. So what would have been a 49-yarder is going to be a lot closer. Oh, that, that, that'll that just absolutely rip your rip Now it's going to be a 44-yarder attempt. So Spencer Corey... Has a long of 39 this year, puts it up, and it's right through the heart. So Spencer Corey comes on and connects on the 44-yard field goal, and uh, he's walking the walk out there, isn't he? Yeah, I believe earlier, you know, you heard me say that. I thought they were going to go for two because it didn't appear they had a lot of confidence in their kicker. Well, he just gave them a lot of reason to get confident because he put it right down the heart. Be uh, as before you called that it. kick, he was two of five and had a long of 39 yards. So that is his long for the year, 44 yards, and he had it all the way. Sure did. And you're right. A little, probably a little too much swagger <laughs> for you. <laughs> but but great job. Great job by them. And, and uh, you know, 
The Jaguars now have to answer. This game is just is just heating up. I feel like we just <laughs> it's one big chess game right now, and it's well, getting, who knows and, how it's going to end. How about Connell Maynard putting this game in the hands of his defense with four minutes and twenty seconds to go? They were faced with a third and twenty, and it really looked like we, we thought they were going to try to do chip away at that, and they run a draw play, got three or four yards, and then Spencer Corey comes on and drills the forty-four yarder. But we've seen a little bit of everything tonight. We sure have. Corey to kick it off after that long field goal attempt. And the Jaguars are going to fake the reverse. And a lot of room out there for number 19, Kendrick Jones. Wow. I mean, he had a little convoy. He had an escort right down the sidelines. And what a big return for Jones. Watch, he shows that so big. And hit it just enough. But you're right, he had a convoy. Devon Ben with a nice block. And if he would have been a little more patient, he actually had more more to get out of that play. But, you know, it's hard to tell a guy not to run faster. <laughs> so, Kendrick just, Jones, a 5'7", 155-pound junior from Memphis, Tennessee. And he's done a fine job today returning kicks. So Southern now with the football. And is Skelton on the option, and he has nowhere to go. What a great job by the Bulldogs' defense. They were all standing around waiting for that one. I think the key for the Jaguars here is they have to be patient. They have to be methodical like they've been almost the entire game and, and, and understand their play calls will work. If they try to stress it too much and they try to do too much with it, they're going to have troubles. And, and, and if they get caught in a, a pass-only play, they're going to be in trouble. Well, that, uh, two things worked well for the Bulldogs there. One, they kept the clock going, and two, they got a loss on the play. So they're bringing some pressure on Skelton. He just dumps it out, and it's nowhere to go. Number 18, uh, Mike Mills was there. Actually, it was a big play by the defense coming up by Southern. By Southern on offense, that the defense showed up quickly on the play. So that set up a third down as the Bulldogs. We mentioned how he put it in the hands of his defense. So far, yeah. through two downs, they've answered the call. So you have Ladarius Skelton. This I, I would expect to see something here where he has a pass run option before he delivers this play. In the pocket, comes up, dunks it underneath to Ben. Does a great job of keeping his balance before he's finally pushed out of bounds. And right now, he's going to be marked short of the first down. So Jorge Vargas... What do you do on fourth down in about a yard and a half? I think I think you definitely you run a, a play run option with Ladarius and you let him make that call. Actually, it's going to be about two yards on the play, and the clock continues to tick down. We have 2.33 and counting, but the Southern Jaguars are looking at a fourth down and a long two to keep the drive alive. They're going to come on this right side. Skelton. Coming to his right on the quarterback sweep. Cuts it inside. He has a first down and more. And he almost escaped for a touchdown on the play. But a fine touchdown saving tackle. As the Jaguars, Dawson Odoms and company, go for the first down. And they came away with it. And now we have an injured Bulldog player on the field. It's Marquise Price, number nine. And he's done a good job today of putting the heat on Skelton when he's been back in that pocket trying to pass. Yeah, he has. And he's looking at his knee, so uh, hopefully he just took a bad lick. But he's down there on the field. He's played Marquise Price played a really good game tonight for the Bulldogs. The good news is they're standing him up and he's got pressure on that left leg, which they were looking at. And he's going to be able to walk off. That's a really good sign. Price, a big 6'6", 250-pound graduate student from Georgia. And you can see what a big play by Skelton. Yeah, look how they just stretch it out, right? And, and again, I've been talking about their offensive linemen that just stay on people and drive the, the defender where they want to go, but they stay on them. And that was a perfect example of there, exactly how that works. Big first down for the Jaguars as we are down to 2 10 on the clock and ticking. And Skelton taking his time. This time he comes to the right side again. 
Cuts inside, had a little opening, still on his feet. Skelton dancing us around for a nice game. So at this point, Jorge, they are already in field goal range. So now it becomes a matter of how much of this clock can you chew up maybe en route to a game-winning touchdown? Oh, yeah. No, I think they're just going to keep running their offense. I have to say something about Jodeci uh, Harris. My gosh, man, he is a mountain of a man, and he just keeps three blocks in a row. I've been watching him. He has just done a fantastic job. Over there on that right side. Yep. Down to 138. Skelton looking to pass it this time. Has to roll out to his right, and he's going to keep it, and he stepped out of bounds. Didn't need much for the first down, just got over the sticks, picked up the first down with 131 to go. So Southern still has the football, and now they're just about in the red zone. And I like the play call there, right? You gave him an opportunity, and I guaranteed it was a one. He, he looks up. If he sees what he likes, he throws it. If not, he goes ahead and tucks and gets the run, and he did it very quick. Jaguars coming up first and 10 with the ball resting. Little inside the 24. This time he fakes the handoff to Skelton, and he comes straight ahead, and he's inside the 20 before the Bulldogs just shut that play down. But once again, Skelton, the most successful play of the day for Southern University has been Skelton doing the zone read or running the option and keeping the football. Yeah, we don't have fresh stats in front of us, but he's probably about 230 yards, 234 yards, 235 or so today. He's been fantastic. And on this drive, especially because he's kept the clock running, one minute to go in the ball game. Southern operating second and about six. Skelton with a lot of time. Throws for the end zone. And it's broken up in the end zone. A fine defensive play. Well, I think he was going for one receiver. Then was it big number 89 yeah, there? Like Tyler Brown jumped in and said, I want it. It looked like it could have been uh, Jeremiah's Houston. Let's take another look because... Uh, he had a shot at it. A lot of people were around that football. <laughs> yeah. That's 88, Jeremiah Houston, who almost made one of those Odell beckham s catches in yeah. the end zone, but he could not bring it down. Big play, third and five. Third and five, Alabama A&M leading 31-28 after a 44-yard field goal by Spencer Corey. We're down to 48 seconds to go in this ballgame pressure coming but we have whistles on the play but the Bulldogs were blitzing also on the play the Jaguars made a good adjustment but let's see what the call is false start offense number 78 five yards third down wow false start on the offense so that's the first bad thing on this drive for the Jaguars please reset the game clock to 48 seconds. 48 seconds. So that's going to push him back a little bit. And instead of having a third and manageable, you're looking at a third and about 11 yards for a first down for Southern. Jaguars still in field goal range. Skelton under pressure. They blitzed him again, but he got out of the pocket. Fires to a wide open man. That is Hunter Register. He has a first down and goal to go at the four with 40 seconds to go in this ball game. Joshua M. Williams was there, but it was Skelton buying the extra time that allowed Hunter Register to get over. Timeout. And we have a timeout on the Southern field. University. And if you're the Bulldogs, Southern University. If, if you're the Bulldogs, you had to respect his run because he's been killing you the whole game, right? And he does a great job here, looking like he's going to run, picks it up real quick, kept his eyes down the field and threw it up. I mean, just a, a, just a fantastic job by Skelton. He's had a hard time kind of getting the ball in the air properly, but right there when you needed it most, he was very calm and threw a strike. Great job by Skelton. And as you can see, 0-2 on fourth and goal from the one-yard line tonight. So that may end up being a big stack the way they're going on this drive. But Skelton did a great job buying the time. But Hunter Register also found the open area, and he just sat down right there and waited for Skelton to find it. And I remember you got, what, two, for, two, two more timeouts for Southern to be able to take. You're on the first and, uh, what, first on the four-yard four line. So time, you got 40 seconds. It's not really an issue. You can run four plays to win this game. First and goal to go for the Southern Jaguars. Skelton with three receivers to his right. 
been in the backfield. He sweeps it left, but he cuts up the middle, and he takes it down to around the two-yard line. As the clock continues to tick, Quantron, Quantron, Con Travis Kelly making the stop for the Bulldogs. And so we have another timeout on the field. Timeout. Southern, the third and final timeout of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. So it is their final one right here. Now, I think why they call these timeouts, I, I don't know, you may could have saved them or whatever, but I think what he's trying to make sure is his team is calm. He didn't want him to get up there and try to run something really fast, calm everyone down, and then also kind of set the agenda. Okay, we have no more timeouts. Here's what we're running next, and here's what we're going to do again. And you can see right there what's left on the schedule for Alabama A&M, and they have Jackson State. Then it's at Alcorn State. That's going to be a tough game. And then they wrap up the year on November 23rd with Mississippi Valley State. So this was a huge game tonight for both these teams as far as where they want to go after this. That's pivotal. And again, it all resides now at the two-yard line with 32 seconds left. So there's a lot at stake of what you're talking about there. It's all going to be in these last couple plays. And we, we showed you the stats. Southern 0-2 in this game on fourth down from the two. So Skelton looking to throw this one. Fires into the end zone. Has a man open. It's Hunter Register. And it's a touchdown for the Jaguars with 28 seconds to go in their homecoming game. Boy, I tell you what, they played that clock like a piano on this drive as <laughs> well, far as milking that thing down. I'll say that cannon went off, and all these fans went off with it when that touchdown happened. A lot of excitement here in this stadium. A great, great job. Uh, by Southern, you know, we, each team in this game has answered the bell, answered the bell. Did they have an answer? The Jaguars have come down just 28 seconds left and answered with a touchdown. Well, and Hunter Register was a huge force on this drive. He factored in, made a couple of big catches, and then the extra point attempt, it's good, but it was a little scary there for a second. But <laughs> it is good, and the Southern Jaguars find themselves back out in front 35 31 with 28 seconds to go and with the keel glass that that's enough time and, and that's exactly what i was going to say we talked about answering just a second ago who answers the call now again time is super tough with 28 seconds but glass is a guy and you talked about the stats earlier he's got about three receivers that average over 20 yards a catch they can make the big plays he has the arm to do it he has the poise and really in this game he's had the time behind the line of scrimmage. His offensive line has given them uh, really good uh, protection. So anything is possible and again, all these teams, these, both these teams have done a great job of staying calm and have just followed followed through. And So we'll see what happens right here. And we, as we take a look and see what's left on the schedule for Southern, of course this was still 28-6 to go, but after tonight they have Virginia Lynchburg and then it's at Jackson State and then the Bayou Classic against Grambling which is always a barn burner there. <laughs> and this one, the kick is up and through the end zone. So Alabama A&M, with 28 ticks to go, will start on their own 25-yard line. Now, remember, their execution, the Bulldogs, have been fantastic. Now, the reverse that they had earlier, the double reverse that you, know, you had a holding on, that was a big costly play for them. Uh, but the rest of that play and execution-wise was fantastic. They've added some really good play calls. And, again, Glass has been very calm in the pocket. And he's been very accurate today, too. It's something I haven't mentioned a whole lot. But when he's, he's thrown the ball, it's been exactly where his receiver could do something with it. You know, this is one of those ball games where truly where you hate to see anybody lose because both these Agreed. teams have played their hearts out tonight. So this is Akeel Glass now. Time ticking down. Throws underneath. And that's going to be a very short gain to Cameron Young. And now that time is really a factor because you didn't get much on that play. And it ticks from 28 down to 21 seconds to go in the ball game. Yeah, that was a non-productive play for the Bulldogs. The second charge timeout of the half. It'll be a 30-second timeout. Please reset the game clock to 23 seconds. 23 seconds. So on the timeout, they will gain a couple of extra seconds on the game clock. It goes from 21 to 23. And you saw Dawson Odoms call his defense over to get them set. And right there, Connell Maynard with a few words of encouragement for his offense. And uh, 
the task is there. I mean, it's a tough task, but these guys have proven tonight that they can handle the pressure. And right now they trail by four. Well, you know, I think the thing is the receivers for the Bulldogs, if they get an open space, they can really make something happen. And you can see just by alignment alone, the Jaguars are really giving a lot of room. If you get to give, give guys a lot of room, something can happen. Glass with an empty backfield. Steps a little bit to his right. Fires and he has a man open at midfield and he makes the catch. It's number 88, Jonathan Woods. And he hauls it in as we're down to 17, 16 seconds to go in this game. And Glass hustles up and he spikes the football. And the Bulldogs did a great job of getting up to the line of scrimmage to spike that football. Everybody hustled back. That pass was all the way to midfield. I think the flag's on the Jaguars for not getting back in time. All side. Defense. Number three. Five yards. First down. With a so southern you get to band, tack on five more play. yards. With a southern band, please refrain from play. Well, the Southern band's going to have to stop playing now because if they don't, they may get a penalty on their football team. So this is not the time where you want another penalty. No. As Akeel Glass starts on the 45, throws it out near the sidelines. He has his man. That is Ibrahim with a catch and a first down. So the clock will stop with 11 seconds to go. And what keep in mind throw. how important that extra point was because had he missed that, the Bulldogs are in field goal range. Now they need a touchdown to win the ball game. Field goal does them no good. The ball resting right around the 36-yard line for Akeel Glass. Fakes the short pass, looking downfield. Still in the pocket, still looking, and finally he throws it away, and he has a man near the sidelines. That is Terrell Gardner. And he steps out with about four seconds to go in the ball game. So they're going to have an opportunity to have one final heave into the end zone for a possible chance to win the ball game. They trail 35-31, the Bulldogs do, with four seconds to go in the ball game. So it's going to come down to this. Akeel Glass with an empty backfield in the pocket. Now he runs out of time, and Glass is going to go down, and that is a huge mistake for Alabama. A&M with the game on the line. Big number 96, Jalen Ivey in the backfield providing the pressure. And, uh, uh, you know, Jalen, uh, Keel Glass has played a good game up to this point, but you have to get that pass off into the end zone. You have to get it off there somewhere. Doesn't matter if it's intercepted, but you have to get it off to the end zone. Yeah, you have to throw it. You had a couple of receivers, though, that I don't understand why they weren't going to the end zone. Uh, but, you know, this game's been about a team making plays at the appropriate time. Uh, the Bulldogs did a fantastic job several times in this game making big defensive stance. And, and you saw the Jaguars do it just then. What better time than to have a sack than the sack they just had right there, putting pressure on him. Uh, they knew he was trying to throw the ball, and they got on him. Of course, we're seeing a little bit of extracurricular activity here. There's no need for that. This was an absolutely well-played football game between two teams. I thought the discipline in the game.